Chapter 26 Going Home After talking with Fred and George, Eisen left. Just the day before Christmas, Eisen left Hogwarts school, planning to go home and spend a good Christmas with his parents. That's right, more than a year has passed since Eisen stepped into the wizarding world, and he hasn't been in touch with his family. When Christmas is over this year, he has to go home. Otherwise, his family would probably think he was missing. Of course, Eisen thinks it's better to be cautious about telling Jeff and Ivy that they have become wizards. After all, the next few years in the wizarding world may be chaotic and dangerous, and it may not be a good thing if parents are involved. Perhaps, after Voldemort was wiped out and the security of the wizarding world was greatly improved, it would be a good choice to let parents know everything. Since Eisen already holds several storage rings, all his luggage and belongings are stored inside. Therefore, without much packing, Eisen left lightly. The Hogwarts train had already sent students home, so Eisen didn't get that ride. Originally, with Eisen's ability, he could apparate directly in Hogsmeade and return to his home in an instant. However, after careful consideration, Eisen felt that he should calm down and reintegrate into the muggle world, wear off the wizarding temperament on his body so that his parents would not see anything. So, Eisen was going to go home the muggle way. After taking the train all the way and then changing to the bus, after spending nearly half a day, Eisen finally returned home in Manchester. Since he lived in the muggle world before, Eisen made the whole family's financial conditions much better by relying on foresight. So the family moved to the small town of Altrincham, which is closer to their parents' work. However, before entering the house, Eisen was still a little apprehensive. Although his parents don't interfere with his actions because he is better at making money. But anyway, I haven't contacted them for more than a year. Therefore, Eisen felt that after returning home, he might be blamed by his parents for a while. Besides, his parents still thought that he was still working in a film and television company in London. If one day they suddenly wanted to go to Jade Forest Film and Television to see him, if they couldn't find him, they would be exposed. Therefore, although Eisen didn't intend to tell his parents about the wizarding world when he returned home this time, he still had to come up with a set of arguments in advance to deal with them. At 6 o'clock in the afternoon, Eisen's parents, Jeff and Ivy, arrived home on time. They thought it was the same as usual, but what they didn't expect was that they saw their son Eisen in the living room of their home. Eisen, what have you been doing for more than a year? Why are you coming back now? After hearing the door open, Eisen already knew who it was. Sure enough, after turning his head to look over, Eisen found that his mother was about to shed tears. Oh, mom, I'm sorry, but the company is too busy. Seeing Ivy's expression, Eisen's head was a little big. No way, in the eyes of his mother, he will always be a child. Even though he has proven his earning power, Ivy is still worried about living alone in London. Okay, didn't I come back to spend Christmas with you this year? Eisen stepped forward and hugged his parents, stopped them and leaned on the sofa together. How is working in the company? Jeff's face was much calmer, but he still took the opportunity to ask. It seems that his father is more concerned about his career. Very good. I'm already planning to start my own film and television company. Eisen revealed his plan with a natural expression. In fact, Eisen's life plan has long since been abandoned. The reason why I say this now is that I want my father Jeff to manage the film and television company I opened. Eisen thought about it. Since he was already planning to work in the wizarding world, then the matter of starting a film and television company would definitely come to naught. But in a flash, Eisen thought that if he directly opened a film and television company and handed it over to his father to manage it, it seemed possible. In this way, he himself can use an excuse to negotiate business outside and disappear from his parents' presence logically. Maybe, as long as you send the company some scripts every now and then, you'll be fine. Starting a company, Eisen, isn't it too early for you to start a company? Ai Wei had a worried look on his face. No way, she thought her son had only been in the film and television company for more than a year, and she couldn't figure out the depth of it. Yes, so I plan to change the plan. After the company is established, I hope my father can help me manage the company. Regarding Ivy's words, Eisen did not refute and said his changed plan. I'm just a skilled worker. How can I manage a company? Jeff looked at his son, with a look of you teasing me on his face. No problem, you can find a manager to take care of it. In fact, for Eisen, this is a trivial matter. After all, for a film and television company to operate, it only needs to recruit talents for various positions. Afterwards, Eisen chatted with his parents about his opinion. According to Eisen, he plans to register a film and television company in London. At that time, Jeff can quit his job in the car factory, then move to live in London and manage his own film and television company for him. As for the mother, Ivy, she can also be transferred to the London branch and continue to be her own editor-in-chief. In this way, they don't have to live in two places. Next, Eisen spent Christmas with his parents at home and then went to London with Jeff to register Eisen Film and Television Company. Afterwards, after Eisen paid a million pounds to the account of the film and television company, he completely let go of it. When Eisen was doing nothing, he suddenly learned the news of the disintegration of the Soviet Union from the TV news. At this time, Eisen suddenly woke up. 
I feel that although there are many more wizards in this world, the general trend of world development is still the same as in the previous life. However, it is a pity that Aizen is not in this circle. Otherwise, it's okay to make a wave of windfall. It might even be possible to live an early retirement life. Aizen didn't mention all kinds of emotions about life. Harry on the other side received a very important gift in his life at Christmas, the invisibility cloak, which was left to him by Harry's father before his death. Although both Harry and Ron have gone crazy and don't care about Nicole Flamel anymore. But after Harry got the invisibility cloak, he still thought of a good idea. Harry thought he could put on the invisibility cloak so that he could wander the corridors of Hogwarts at night. Even in the restricted area of the library that requires the professor's approval to enter, he can come and go freely. In this way, he could go directly to the restricted section to find information on Nicole Flamel. Before going to bed at night, after thinking about all this, Harry sneaked out of bed and wrapped himself in the invisibility cloak. For some reason, Harry didn't wake up his little friend Ron and walked quietly through the common room alone and crawled out of the portrait hole. The inside of the library was pitch black. Although Harry entered the restricted area as he wished, it was a pity that he searched aimlessly and couldn't find it at all. Instead, when he pulled out a large black and silver book, he was startled by the shrill scream it made. The sound caught Filt's attention, and Harry hurriedly put the book back on the shelf before turning and running away. Afterwards, Harry entered an abandoned classroom to avoid Filch and Snape, who heard the sound. In this abandoned classroom, Harry found a very imposing mirror. The golden frame looked extraordinarily gorgeous, supported by two claw-shaped feet, and reached the ceiling so high. In this mirror, Harry saw his parents for the first time in his life. I saw their appearance, and saw their concern for themselves. The mirror of Ariste is indeed a mirror that can reflect the things that people most desire to see. So, after seeing his parents, Harry would sneak here for days on end, wallowing in them. Even if Ron persuaded Harry after knowing it, he couldn't stop him. With this mirror, who cares who Nicole Flamel is? Harry had long forgotten about him, and as for Professor Snape, what did it matter if he stole something? If the plot develops like this, then Harry, the prophesied savior, is likely to be useless. But obviously, this is not allowed by Dumbledore. So after the third day Harry was about to continue, but was stopped by Dumbledore. In other words, currently the best app for reading and listening to books, Yegwa Reading, Yegwa You Do install the latest version. After a deep conversation, Dumbledore warned Harry not to indulge in false fantasies and forget about real life. Chapter 27 The Sorcerer's Stone On the last day of the Christmas holiday, Eisen came to Hogwarts after saying goodbye to his parents. The Muggle World's film and television company and other trivial matters have been dealt with, and now he only needs to occasionally send some of the movie scripts he created back to the film and television company. Although Harry obeyed Dumbledore's orders and pressed the invisibility cloak on the bottom of the box, forgetting about the mirror of Ariste, he began to have frequent nightmares. You see, Professor Dumbledore was right. The magic mirror might drive you crazy. Ron's face showed that it really did. Professor Eisen, what do you think? Obviously, Hermione, who had just returned to school the day before, disagreed with this opinion. So she looked directly at Eisen, who was beside her. When Eisen saw the three of them again, Harry recounted the troubles he had encountered recently. Although Hermione was disappointed that Harry and Ron hadn't figured out who Nico Flamel was, she was still concerned about Harry's problems. Harry had the same nightmare every day. He dreamed that his parents disappeared in a sudden green light, accompanied by an eerie laugh. Eisen knew that this was actually the real scene that Harry experienced when he was a child. It was the scene where Voldemort killed his parents kept replaying. The book chasing app recommended to me by an old book friend who has known me for 10 years, yet we're reading. It's really easy to use. I rely on reading and listening to books to pass the time while driving and before going to bed. You can download Yegwa You Do here. Don't worry, I think you can learn a clemency if you can. Although Aizen knew what was going on, he certainly couldn't act like he knew everything. Otherwise, there is no way to explain it clearly to others. However, after comforting Harry, Aizen made a suggestion. Anyway, Harry was going to learn a clemency sooner or later, so letting him learn it earlier would be somewhat useful. It's just that a clemency is really difficult, and even Aizen's learning progress is very slow let alone Harry. In the original book, Harry never learned a clemency, or maybe he did, but only once when burying Dobby the house elf. From this point of view, even if Aizen asked Harry to learn a clemency in advance, it would be difficult to change anything. Aizen didn't explain much about the trio's a clemency-specific questions, because if it is explained in depth, I am afraid that it will involve the content of Harry's brain being affected by Voldemort's invasion. Therefore, Aizen just gave a conclusion that a clemency can help empty the brain and help people sleep. After the semester started, the trio started a life of happy study again. Thanks to Hermione's urging, the three of them started to use the 10-minute break between classes to go to the library to look up materials. And Harry has less time because he is busy with Quidditch training. Since the next Quidditch match was Gryffindor versus Hufflepuff, and if they could win it, Gryffindor would win the House Cup over Slytherin. Obviously, 
This is a rare opportunity for Gryffindor who have long disliked each other. After all, it was the first time in seven years. So, when Wood, captain of the Gryffindor Quidditch team, was tougher than ever, Harry completed training every day, even on rainy days after a heavy snowfall. Moreover, Harry also discovered an advantage, that is, after training to exhaustion every day, it can also reduce the number of nightmares. However, although this was good news for Harry, Wood told him bad news. Snape would be the referee in the next Quidditch match between Gryffindor and Hufflepuff. After hearing the news, Harry's expression turned ugly. Because when he thought that Snape would be the referee, he remembered being told by Hermione and Ron that he was cursed by Snape. If Gryffindor has a chance of winning the House Cup against Slytherin, then Snape will definitely find an excuse to deduct points from Gryffindor. The savior thought to himself. After training, the players were still discussing the possible consequences of Snape being the referee, but Harry hurried to the Gryffindor common room. After coming here, Harry found out that both Ron and Hermione were here. Ron was fiddling with his wizard chess set while Hermione read a book. Let's play a game of wizard chess. When Harry sat next to Ron, Ron extended an invitation to him. It was rare to beat Harry in wizard chess, and Ron caught him playing chess whenever he had the opportunity. However, the moment he looked up and saw Harry's face, he changed his mind and asked, What's wrong? Your face is so ugly. Scanning around, Harry noticed that the Gryffindor common room was relatively crowded. So he lowered his voice so that no one could hear him. Snape will be the referee for the next Quidditch match. Then you don't participate in the competition. Hermione at the side immediately looked away from the book, with a look of surprise on her face. Yeah, just say you're sick, Ron suggested. You can pretend you broke your leg. Hermione agreed with Ron's suggestion. No, you have to really break your leg. Ron shook his head and proposed a more cruel solution. No way, for a wizard. Only if his leg is really broken, can he have a legitimate excuse to rely on the school doctor Madame Pomfrey. However, for such a suggestion, Harry shook his head and refused. No way, Gryffindor didn't have a backup seeker, and if Harry didn't play, the whole team wouldn't be able to play. Shrugging, Hermione and Ron said nothing more. After all, Harry was right, if he didn't play, the consequences would be too bad. Looking back at the book, Hermione kept turning the pages, murmuring. This is. After seeing Hermione's actions, Harry looked at Ron with a puzzled expression. Hermione said that she already knows where to find Nicole Flamel. Ron leaned closer to Harry's ear and whispered an explanation. I found it. I found it. Suddenly, Hermione stood up, and the appearance of shouting attracted many people's attention. Seeing this, Hermione's face flushed red. She quickly sat down and motioned to Harry and Ron. Nicole Flamel? Harry and Ron didn't care about Hermione's movements, but approached her with surprise. That's right, Nicole Flamel is the only known maker of the Philosopher's Stone. Seeing that the two were still puzzled, Hermione couldn't help giving them a blank look and placed the book in front of them. You look at this passage. I saw that it was written in the book. Ancient alchemy involves the refining of the Sorcerer's Stone, a magical substance with amazing functions. It has the ability to turn any metal into pure gold, and it can also create a potion of immortality so that those who drink this potion can never die. Over the centuries, there have been many reports of the Philosopher's Stone, but the only remaining one belongs to the famous alchemist and opera lover Mr. Nicole Flamel. He celebrated his 665th birthday last year and is living in seclusion in Devon with his wife Perinal, 668. Then Lu Wei must be guarding the Philosopher's Stone. After reading this paragraph, Harry gave a positive judgment. That's right, Professor Dumbledore is a friend of Nicole Flamel, so it must be that Flamel asked Dumbledore to keep it for him. Because someone called the Sorcerer's Stone, Dumbledore moved it from Gringotts and let Lu Wei guard it, Hermione nodded, her brown hair seeming to shine. A stone that can turn stones into gold and make people immortal, no wonder Snape wants to get his idea of it. Ron on the side also expressed his opinion in amazement. Obviously, all three agreed that the Philosopher's Stone was Snape's target. Just when Harry was feeling distressed on the other side, Eisen was in a daze in his office. As for the reason for Eisen's daze, it is very confusing to say. He found that his strength had reached a bottleneck. Of course, it's not the bottleneck of the strength of magic power. After all, he has gold finger in his body, and the magic power in his body has been raised to a very large level. Character. Eisen Turner. Extraordinary talent. Magic. Activated. Magic value. 5,500. Add 10 points of magic every day. Extraordinary characteristics. Excellent level spellcasting characteristics. Fit degree 115. Already fused. Miracle feature. One copy automatically get one copy every year. The continuous increase and strengthening of magic power can indeed make the spells cast by Aizen more powerful. But for him, his strength has actually reached a bottleneck. Or to be precise, the strength of the transformation technique has reached a bottleneck. For example, although his transfiguration technique can change objects and living things as he likes, and can even change the form of elements, he can't change one element to another. 
Previously, Aizen thought that his lack of magic power was the main reason, but after months of accumulation and practice, he found that he still couldn't do it. Moreover, he had a hunch that if he simply relied on the magic power in his body to accumulate strength, he might never be able to do so. Chapter 28 Fred and George's Surprise After understanding his current situation, Aizen understood that if he didn't care about it, then he could only rely on the accumulation of miraculous characteristics and daily increasing magic power to improve his strength in the future. But obviously, although Aizen feels that he has a gold finger and can go on the road of magic more smoothly than others, but he doesn't want to rest on his laurels. Therefore, after careful consideration, Aizen felt that the reason why he encountered a bottleneck was probably because his background was too shallow. If you want to play transformation to the extent of changing elements, for example, changing flames into water, water into lightning, lightning into storms, etc., you must study magic in depth. After you have a deeper understanding of transformation, you can able to continue to improve. Recommended, Yegwa reading and chasing books is really easy to use. Download Yegwa you do here. Everyone can try it soon. The current Aizen is really good on the surface. On the one hand, it is the growing magic power in the body. On the other hand, after learning apparition, it is more reasonable to match it with disarming curse, iron armor curse, and transfiguration. With the blessing of Aizen's comprehensive physical fitness, which is nearly three times that of ordinary people, his combat effectiveness can be regarded as excellent. But obviously, compared with Dumbledore, it is much worse. At the very least, Dumbledore not only has huge magic power, but also has extremely strong spellcasting skills. In addition, for him to become good friends with Nicole Flamel, it is obvious that his attainments in alchemy are also top-notch. In addition, Dumbledore was able to defeat Grindelwald and Voldemort. It would be unreasonable to say that he did not have a profound knowledge of black magic. Finally, Dumbledore was a master transfiguration. It's hard to say how the level is, but Aizen speculates that it should be no less than Minerva and McGonagall's. Look, after reading Dumbledore's resume, you will find that the other party can be said to be proficient in all kinds of magic classifications. On the other hand, Aizen, although his own strength is not bad, but there are too few means to deal with emergencies. For example, all kinds of strange curses, poisons, magic items, magical creatures, and so on. If the enemy encountered happens to have some means to hit Aizen's blind spot, wouldn't it be a bad idea? However, even though he knew his shortcomings, Aizen said that it would be too difficult for him to be proficient in all kinds of magic categories like Dumbledore. After all, although he has always been a top student in the muggle world, he is actually just a fake top student who became someone else's child by relying on the memory of his previous life. At the very least, he knew he was no match for Hermione in terms of studies. It was because of this that when he first came into contact with magic, in order to be able to protect himself, he put most of his energy on charms and transfiguration. Knowing where his shortcomings are, Aizen thought of a solution that was not a solution. That is to devote part of its energy to alchemy and study the production of magic props in depth. On the one hand, it may be easier for him to study magic knowledge in depth by analogy. On the other hand, it happens to serve his gold finger. Aizen believes that as long as there are enough powerful supernatural characteristics, his personal safety will be more guaranteed. At the very least, he is now immune to the disarming curse. Bang bang. While Aizen was deep in thought, there was a sudden knock on the door. Come in. Aizen retracted the virtual panel with a thought, and then opened the door with a flick of his finger. The twin brothers West came in smiling, and winked at each other while smiling. The telescope is ready? I don't know if it is an illusion, but Aizen always feels that Fred and George have an inexplicable aura. As long as they're present, they can make people happy. Then, a smile appeared on Aizen's face. That's right, Professor Aizen. Fred nodded to George as he spoke. Professor Aizen, is it satisfactory to try it? George seemed to have received the signal, took out a telescope from his pocket, and placed it on the table in front of Aizen. It's strange how these two brothers seem to be a lot more serious. Thinking this way in his heart, although Aizen was a little suspicious, he didn't think much about it. He stretched out his right hand, and the telescope on the table flew over without a sound. However, at the moment when he got the binoculars, Aizen showed a puzzled look in his eyes. Because he didn't get the gold finger feature reprint prompt from the telescope. Messed up? Or is it that the secondary production of magic props is useless? Aizen thought of a lot in a flash, but after seeing a faint look of anticipation on George's face, Aizen suddenly remembered something. Could this be the boxing telescope? Thinking of this, Aizen put the telescope in front of his eyes for a closer look. Looking at the telescope whose surface remained unchanged, Aizen had to marvel at the alchemy talent of the Wesley twins again. Is this a boxing telescope? Come on, George, show me how to use it. Knowing that Fred and George were going to play a prank on him, Aizen showed a half-smile expression and stretched out his hand to throw the telescope to George. Oh, no, Professor Aizen, it's really cruel. George held the binoculars, showing a look of grief. This is the first time our prank has failed. Fred was also dejected beside him. 
It seems that for the two of them, it is an unforgivable thing that they failed to play a prank on Aizen. However, after seeing that Aizen still didn't change his expression, Fred gave a sly smile and handed out a telescope again. Discover extraordinary features. Excellent level beyond the horizon features. Do you need to consume a miraculous feature to reproduce it? A line of words popped up in front of Aizen's eyes, but the content changed from the original line of sight enhancement feature to the beyond the horizon feature. Although the change is very subtle, Aizen guessed that it should have something to do with the telescope becoming a see-through telescope. Afterwards, a satisfied smile appeared on his face, and he put away the perspective telescope. Looking at the pair of twin brothers who looked like real treasures, Aizen didn't expect that they could really give him such a big surprise. Open a magic trick shop and let the brothers work for themselves? Or join in when they're about to run a magic trick workshop? At this time, Aizen suddenly had such an idea. No way, their talents are indeed outstanding. Aizen stood up from behind the desk and gave the two brothers two galleons. Seeing that the other party seemed to be refusing, Aizen interrupted them in advance. Oh, there is no need to refuse. It is your processing fee, you know. I am very satisfied with the products you have transformed. But, Professor Aizen, didn't we agree that this is part of the authorization? Although the Wesley twins like to play pranks, they don't take advantage of others. Of course, but I think it is reasonable to charge a part of the processing fee, and I will entrust you to help in the future. To be honest, this is Aizen's true thinking. He knew that Wes's family conditions were really not very good, so there was no need for his wife to care about this small amount of money. Wow, then, Professor Aizen, do you have any new ideas? The two smiled in relief, and Fred followed up with a question. I think that must be a really good idea, like punching binoculars. George is also interested, and compliments Aizen in passing. Do you know the tape recorder? Aizen shook his head, but there was a weird smile on his face. Recorder? Fred showed a puzzled look. It's a muggle product. It can record and play sounds. It's a very magical muggle machine, George explained. I know, but, Fred glared at George, then looked at Aizen with a puzzled expression. That's right, he didn't just understand why Aizen would mention a muggle machine like a tape recorder. Hey, it seems that their brains are still not working. Aizen sighed in his heart and then reminded them, muggle machines like tape recorders can record and play sounds, but they are electronic products and cannot be used in Hogwarts. If you use magic to transform them, then it can be used in school. For example, certain sounds could be recorded and played back while the wizard was sleeping. Having said that, Aizen saw the expressions of surprise and surprise on the two of them. It seems that their prank methods are much richer. Simply fantastic. I can't wait to pull a prank. Professor Aizen, let's go first. We must quickly realize this idea. The two cheered and even high-fived back and then said goodbye impatiently. Aizen couldn't help but shook his head seeing the two of them jumping off like this. As for what kind of psychological trauma will be caused to the little wizards after the magic tape recorder is made, it is none of Aizen's business. Chapter 29. A Belated Christmas Present As for why Aizen put his idea on the tape recorder, it actually originated from a previous idea. That is to transform the tape recorder through alchemy and magic, turning it into a magical prop that can record sound. In doing so, it can register the deadly call of Mandela. In this way, Aizen might be able to acquire a fatal attack characteristic. The next day, Aizen continued to be busy with his own affairs in the office. In fact, apart from still borrowing some alchemy books from the library to study and study, he is still practicing acclimacy. Perhaps because of Aizen's hard work in Taoism, he really found a little trick, and finally he can achieve the state of initially emptying his mind and thinking about nothing. In this state, Aizen can control his emotions so that outsiders cannot judge his thoughts through his expressions. Of course, it also has a certain resistance to spiritual penetration magic, such as legilimency. However, Aizen was not very skilled in entering the state of acclimacy. If you want to hide your thoughts from master legilimency, you need to continue to work hard. As for fabricating a memory in one's own mind, that is a more advanced skill. However, after studying alchemy in depth, Aizen discovered a problem. That is, his knowledge is somewhat insufficient. At the beginning, when he learned some relatively simple knowledge of alchemy, he didn't notice anything. But after going deeper, it was discovered that alchemy also involved the knowledge of ancient runes and potions. On the one hand, a lot of advanced alchemy knowledge is recorded in ancient runes, or at least some key points are recorded in ancient runes. On the other hand, some difficult alchemy skills also need specific potions to assist. If Aizen is just a beginner and doesn't plan to study in depth, then he doesn't need to learn ancient runes and potions. But if he wants to go deeper, he must master ancient runes and potions to a certain extent. Dong dong. A sudden knock on the door interrupted Aizen's thoughts. Come in. Aizen opened the door with a wave of his hand while speaking. I also felt strange in my heart. When my office was so busy, people came over one after another. Professor Aizen, a petite figure rushed in, and then quickly closed the door. When she saw the surprised expression on the face of Professor Aizen, sitting behind the desk, 
Her face suddenly turned red. Hermione, are you here for something? According to Aizen's understanding, the trio should have known what was under the trapdoor recently. However, Hermione came to his office with a sneaky expression, which made Aizen more curious. In other words, currently the best app for reading and listening to books, Yegua Reading, Yegua You Do install the latest version. Yes, Professor Aizen, Hermione's little head nodded, thinking about what to say. Relax, don't be too nervous. Sit down, please. Aizen smiled, and at the same time, with a wave of his hand, he threw a card into a chair and placed it in front of Hermione. Thank you, Professor Aizen. This is your Christmas present. Perhaps infected by Aizen's smile, Hermione heaved a sigh of relief, then took out a long box and placed it in front of Aizen, then sat down down. Christmas gift. Aizen froze for a moment. He had given Hermione, Harry, and Ron a storage ring respectively, but he did not expect to receive a Christmas present. However, it seems that Christmas is already over. Time for Christmas presents? There was a look of doubt in Aizen's eyes, and then he glanced at Hermione's finger. Yes, the ring he gave was worn by Hermione on the middle finger of her right hand. Yes, Professor Aizen, I don't know your home address, that's why I sent it here now. I hope you won't be offended. After noticing Aizen's eyes, Hermione felt a little embarrassed again. However, she still explained why Christmas had passed and why she came to give Christmas presents. Oh, how could it be? I have to thank you for remembering to give me a Christmas present. Although it was a late Christmas present, Aizen would not blame the other party anyway. He stretched out his hand and opened the box. Quilling a quill. Whoa, I just need a quill to write a script? Thank you, Hermione. Well, Aizen does need a quill, because he just happens to be taking some time off to write some scripts to send to his dad. However, he still plans to see if Fred and George have invented an automatic writing quill in a while, and then buy one for use. Unexpectedly, Hermione sent a quill. Writing a script? Hermione felt that she had misheard, and suddenly opened her small mouth and looked at Aizen in surprise. That's right, um, you may not believe it, I actually have a muggle film and television company in London, so I will find time to write some scripts and send them to the company. Aizen looked at Hermione with a smile on his face, revealing a faint complacency look. However, when it came to this point, Aizen had a whim, whether to directly write the story of Harry Potter into a script and make it into a movie. In other words, if you are worried about getting Voldemort's attention, you can change the perspective and make a movie with Hermione as the protagonist. Of course, due to the law of secrecy in the wizarding world, Aizen's idea is highly unlikely to be implemented. Chances are, as soon as the film is made and shown, it will attract the attention of the Ministry of Magic and be found. However, just because there is no way to reveal wizard-related information in the muggle world doesn't mean it can't be done the other way around. If you open a magical movie theater in the wizarding world and copy muggle movies, do you know if you can make money? Aizen thinks it should be fine. Because what the muggle world is like, many wizards are particularly curious. It would be a good idea to let wizards understand how muggles live through movies. Perhaps, an Aizen magic film and television company can be opened in Diagon Alley. In this way, when the wizarding world is inevitably exposed to the muggle world in the future, more wizards can learn how muggles think through movies, which can reduce more unnecessary conflicts. Previously, Aizen believed that the wizarding world would definitely be exposed. Because in terms of the speed of technological development in his previous life, the development of the internet was too fast, but within 20 years, the era of the mobile internet has already arrived. Before the advent of the internet era, ordinary people discovered that wizards cast spells. Maybe before things spread, the Ministry of Magic would come to the door and directly remember them clearly, so as to eliminate the exposure of wizards. But in the future, every muggle will have a mobile phone. Once a wizard is found to be using magic, it may spread throughout the internet in an instant, letting hundreds of thousands or even tens of millions of people know. In this way, how will the Ministry of Magic deal with it? If the Ministry of Magic does not deal with this possible situation in advance, the sudden meeting of two strange groups will inevitably lead to conflict. At that time, Aizen has no way to guess what serious consequences will be caused. Therefore, using film and television companies as a bridge to connect the wizarding world and the muggle world may be the most effective solution that Aizen can do at the moment. Muggle film company? Professor Aizen, aren't you a wizard? Why do you want to open a film company in the muggle world? After hearing Aizen's explanation, Hermione was surprised at first, and then became suspicious. Well, Hermione, you know, I am a muggle-born wizard, and I have lived in the muggle world for a while. Also, you are also a muggle-born wizard. Aizen did not answer directly, but said something the situation of himself and Hermione. Yes, Professor Aizen, I know there's a lot of money to be made in film companies, but we're wizards, aren't we? Clearly, from Hermione's point of view, it wasn't much use for wizards to make too much money in the muggle world. Chapter 30. Fooling Hermione. No, Hermione, I can give you an example. How do wizards brew potions? I think you must know. Aizen shook his head, using the example of wizards brewing potions. According to the formula of the potion, 
Add different herbs and materials to the crucible according to strict and precise procedures, so that the potion can be refined. After hearing Eisen's question, Hermione replied without thinking. That's right, then. Do you think the experimental tools in the muggle world, measuring cups and scales are helpful for brewing potions? Eisen nodded and continued to ask. However, magic can be done too, isn't it Professor Eisen? Hermione nodded, but then retorted. Yes, magic can indeed be done. But if muggles invent better tools, why don't wizards use them? Eisen did not deny Hermione's statement, because wizards do have their own system. But in any case, with the advancement of technology, muggles will invent more and more sophisticated, more convenient and useful tools. I see, Professor Eisen. So you are going to start a film company in the muggle world to make money, and then buy those tools. After hearing Eisen's explanation, Hermione showed an expression of enlightenment. Of course, that's only part of the reason. Eisen nodded, then shook his head again. Part of the reason? Hermione felt her little head was muddled, and looked at Eisen suspiciously. Hmm, Hermione, do you think wizards will be able to hide themselves in the muggle world in the future? After pondering for a while, Eisen got up from behind his desk and walked back and forth in the office. Huh? Does the professor think that wizards will be exposed to muggle society? But, don't wizards know how to expel spells and have a lot of magic to hide themselves? Hearing Eisen's question, Hermione quickly realized what was wrong, and she showed her difficulty. Confident look. Later, she was very puzzled, because the wizard's magic is indeed very powerful, and she can easily hide herself. Yes, you're right. Wizards can indeed hide themselves well when muggles don't find them. But what if they are discovered? The International Federation of Wizards Secrecy Act made wizards disappear from the muggle world, but it is undeniable that every year some wizards will expose traces of spellcasting in front of muggles. Eisen nodded without denying it, but pointed out the crux of the matter. However, I remember that the Ministry of Magic has an amnesiac command that can erase muggles' memories of magic they have experienced. Obviously, Hermione has some knowledge of some of the work of the Ministry of Magic. That's right. The Ministry of Magic's Department of Magical Accidents and Disasters Amnestic Cancellation Command is dealing with such issues. If an accident cannot be simply covered up with magic, there will be a department called the Muggle Issues Mediation Committee to think about it. Give some other reasons to explain to the muggles. Eisen has learned about this aspect, so he knows exactly what's going on. Then Professor Eisen, why do you think wizards will be exposed? Since Eisen knew that the Ministry of Magic already had a mature response plan, Hermione didn't understand why he made such a prediction. The book chasing app recommended to me by an old book friend who has known me for 10 years, yet we're reading. It's really easy to use. I rely on reading and listening to books to pass the time while driving and before going to bed. You can download Yeg Will You Do here. Hermione, you have lived in the muggle world since you were a child. I think you must know how fast the technology of muggles is advancing. Eisen sighed and continued to make a point. Hiss. Hermione seemed to think of something and suddenly took a breath and then showed a worried look. The professor said that in the future, muggle technology will be developed to the point where wizards and magic can be discovered. Such a conclusion surprised Hermione a little. She thought that after entering the wizarding world, she would be separated from ordinary people, but she didn't expect that there would be a possibility of being exposed in the future. Yes, Britain has experienced several industrial revolutions. As a top student who has lived in the muggle world since she was a child, Hermione certainly knows how fast technology is advancing in the muggle world. Therefore, it was no surprise that Hermione came to such a conclusion. You're not quite right, but that's about it. Eisen shook his head and nodded again. Judging from the current development trend of muggle technology, they can't discover magic, but there is no doubt that casting magic wizards will be discovered by them. If you pay attention to computers and the internet, you will find that this is something that can change the world. With the advancement of technology, the internet will become more and more prosperous, and it will connect the whole world together. At that time, the distance between people will be infinitely shortened, and people can communicate with people from other countries anytime, anywhere. Barriers to communication. If one day in the future, wizards cast spells in front of muggles and are exposed, they may not wait for the wizards of the Ministry of Magic to clean up the memories of muggles, and they will find that someone can cast magic has been spread by muggles through the internet. World. At that time, countless people will know about magic. So how can the Ministry of Magic deal with it in time? After hearing Professor Eisen mention this possibility, Hermione was silent for a while. Then, as if he thought of something, his little face was full of worry. Of course, you don't have to worry, Hermione. It's not that time yet. That's why we have time to prepare. Seeing that Hermione was frightened by his foolish words, Eisen stopped beating around the bush and started talking about his purpose. Open a muggle film company, and then reveal the news about the wizarding world. Hearing Eisen say this, Hermione's worry disappeared, and then she thought of Eisen's plan. That's right, but it needs to be done step by step, and you can't directly disclose things related to magic. Moreover, I plan to open a magic film company in Diagon Alley, 
to show wizards movies about life in the muggle world. Aizen nodded approvingly, came up with the idea of starting magic films. In this way, muggles will gradually understand wizards, and wizards will also understand muggles. In the future, if wizards are exposed to the muggle world, it will not cause too intense conflicts. Hearing Aizen's words, Hermione's his eyes lit up immediately. At this moment, Hermione finally understood what Aizen was thinking. That's right, so, I invite you to join my magic film company now, how about it, Miss Hermione? Aizen stopped and turned to look at Hermione. But, Professor Aizen, I don't know what I can do? Seeing Professor Aizen's handsome appearance, Hermione suddenly felt embarrassed. It's okay, this is just a private invitation, maybe we can talk about what to do after the company is established, how about that? Aizen stopped teasing her. To be honest, preparing to open a magic film company in Diagon Alley is just an idea, and there are still many preparations to be done. That well, Professor Aizen. Seeing what Aizen said, Hermione finally didn't refuse his proposal. So, Hermione, thank you again for the Christmas present you gave me. I like it very much. Is there anything else you can do? Seeing that Hermione was finally tricked into becoming an employee of his own, although it was only a verbal agreement, Aizen still couldn't help it. Live showed a happy smile. Then, Aizen picked up the quill again and nodded to Hermione as a gesture. Oh, no more, Professor Aizen, goodbye. Puli Hutu was tricked into becoming an employee by Aizen, and Hermione ran out of Aizen's office as if waking up from a dream. Thump, thump, thump. Hermione trotted all the way to the eighth floor. Password, fat lady portrait asked seriously. Pig nose. Correct answer. After Hermione successfully entered the Gryffindor common room, she hurried back to her dormitory without even answering Harry and Ron who were playing chess near the fire. Judging from her flushed face, she didn't know whether it was caused by shyness or panting while running. What's wrong with Hermione? Ron asked Harry with a look of surprise as he saw Hermione passing by in a hurry. I don't know. Maybe I found some information again. Harry shook his head. Chapter 31 Quidditch Match, Part 1 Hey Harry, what would you do if you got the Philosopher's Stone? Shrugging, Ron lowered his head and asked in a low voice. Since several people knew about the magic of the Sorcerer's Stone, they talked about it almost in free time. Turn the stone into gold? Then there will be endless money to spend. Who knows? For Harry, he didn't have a clear idea of how powerful the Philosopher's Stone was. It means being rich. That's right, if I have money, I will definitely buy my own Quidditch team. As if he had already got the Philosopher's Stone, Ron became excited when he said that. The book chasing app recommended to me by an old book friend who has known me for 10 years, yet we're reading. It's really easy to use. I rely on reading and listening to books to pass the time while driving and before going to bed. You can download Yegwoyudu here. When talking about Quidditch, Harry suddenly remembered that there was still a difficulty to overcome. That was Snape and the upcoming Quidditch match. I have to play Quidditch. If I quit, Malfoy and the others will think I'm too scared to face Snape. But I have to. Let them see if I win. They can you still laugh. Thinking of this, Harry looked at Ron solemnly. That's right, that's it. We must win and let them see. Infected by Harry's tone, Ron also showed the same hatred. As the game was approaching, Fred and George, the batsman of the Gryffindor Quidditch team, also suspended the research and production of the magic tape recorder. And although Harry said that he must participate in the competition and showed a nonchalant expression, he was actually very nervous inside. Since Gryffindor is facing Hufflepuff this time, and if they win, they can beat Slytherin to win the House Cup, so the entire Gryffindor Quidditch team is extremely excited. After all, Slytherin had not been defeated for seven years in a row. However, Harry felt a little depressed about it. Because thinking of Snape as an eccentric referee, Harry couldn't be sure that they would actually win. Perhaps because of this, Harry had recently found his weekly potions class to be a painful ordeal. As usual, Snape's attitude towards Harry was still very bad, but for some reason, Harry always felt that Snape seemed to be able to read other people's minds, and perhaps already knew that they had discovered the truth about the Philosopher's Stone. The next afternoon, the Quidditch match was about to begin. Outside the locker room, Ron sent Harry his blessing. Harry knew that maybe Ron was worried that Harry would never come back. Harry, come on. I believe you will be able to win. At this moment, Hermione appeared in front of the two and sent her blessings. Harry was not in a good mood, so he just nodded and said nothing. On the other hand, Ron was very strange, because Hermione was rarely with him during this time, just staying in the dormitory by herself, and she didn't know what she was busy with. By the time Harry put on his Quidditch suit and held his Nimbus 2000, Aizen was already sitting on the high platform. Yes, although Aizen doesn't think he can play, it is also a pleasure to watch the students' games. On the other side, in the Gryffindor stands, Ron and Neville also found a place to sit down, obviously ready to wait for Harry to appear. Professor Eisen. A crisp voice rang in his ears, and Eisen looked back only to find that the little girl Hermione was walking towards him. Hermione, who is this? Eisen looked at Hermione, but saw that she was sitting beside him, with her wand in her sleeve, 
holding it firmly in one hand, as if she was facing an enemy. Seeing Hermione's appearance, Aizen was a little stunned for a while. Could he meet some enemies? But no matter how much he recalled in his mind, he couldn't remember what kind of attack he would encounter in this Quidditch match. Dementor attack? No, it's impossible. This is the first year of the Savior's school, and it's not yet the time for the Dementors to appear. If Snape wants to hurt Harry, I'm going to cast a spell on Snape. I just learned the leg lock curse, and I hope it can help Harry. Seeing Aizen's puzzled look, Hermione explained solemnly. Hearing what Hermione said, Aizen showed an expression of sudden realization. Do you think that in the last Quidditch match, Snape cast a curse on Harry's broomstick, and this time he is the referee, and he will attack Harry? It must be so, otherwise Snape, who has never been a referee before, why did he referee the match between Gryffindor and Hufflepuff? It must be to deal with Harry. Hermione's little face revealed a worried look. Maybe, Snape is just biased towards Hufflepuff, intending to let Gryffindor fail, thus losing the chance of defeating Slytherin and winning the House Cup, and Harry will not make a move. Aizen knew everything well, but he still said another possible. But he shot last time. Why didn't he shoot this time as a referee? Although she felt that what Aizen said was reasonable, Hermione still felt that Snape's primary target must be Harry. No way. She knew how bad Snape's attitude towards Harry was when she took potions class with Harry. Ha ha. Don't worry, Hermione. Look, Professor Dumbledore is watching from the stands. No one can hurt Harry in front of him. Aizen laughed, and at the same time, a poker surfaced in his hand, turning into a the spotting binoculars, then handed to Hermione, before pointing to the opposite stand with the other. That would be wonderful. Hermione took the binoculars and finally breathed a sigh of relief when she saw that Dumbledore was indeed sitting in the stands. Indeed, Hermione knew that with Dumbledore, the greatest white wizard in the wizarding world, watching, no one could hurt Harry. On the other side, Harry was being arranged tactics by Wood in the locker room. Potter, I don't mean to put pressure on you, but we need to catch the snitch as soon as possible more than ever. We need to do it quickly. Only in this way, Snape will not have time to favor Hufflepuff too much. Obviously, Wood. The Gryffindor chief, the team's captain, also decided that Snape's refereeing was for malicious purposes. Look, my god, even Dumbledore came to the game. Fred, who was on the side, peeked out the door, as if he had discovered something, and then exclaimed. Hearing Fred's exclamation, Harry quickly looked out from the door, and sure enough, he saw the silver white beard. Instantly, Harry felt himself relax. Yes, he felt that since Dumbledore was watching the game, he would never allow Snape to hurt him. Professor Eisen, look at Snape's face. After both players entered the field, Hermione showed a look of fear on her face, and then suddenly patted Aizen's arm. Under Hermione's reminder, Aizen noticed that Snape's complexion became gloomy, especially when he saw Harry entering the arena. His complexion was even gloomy as if water was about to drip out. Combined with the empty eyes, it could scare a child weeping. Don't worry, if he makes a move on Harry, I'll stop him too. Aizen nodded, his right hand radiated rays of light, and gently rubbed Hermione's head. Just when Hermione was about to show a shy expression, her expression suddenly changed, revealing a look of comfort and surprise. Obviously, the ray of light in Aizen's hand had a calming and calming effect under the effect of magic, which was indeed beyond Hermione's expectation. In fact, this is not a powerful spell, but a small technique discovered in the process of practicing a clemency, which can drive away negative emotions in the heart to a certain extent. With a whistle blown, the match between Gryffindor and Hufflepuff officially began. Chapter 32 Quidditch Match Part 2. However, what left Aizen speechless was that even though the referee was Professor Snape, the Wesley twins still did not change their natural talents. Because not long after the game, George, the hitter, hit the bludger directly at Snape. Not sure if he did it on purpose, but then Snape awarded Hufflepuff a free throw. But Aizen felt that George must have done it on purpose. Yes, George and Fred's talent for mischief is on the horizon all the time. Watching them play tricks on others is a joy. But if the object of the prank is yourself, it will be enough to cause a headache. However, it may be a means of retaliation for George, or it may not want Gryffindor to win. So a few minutes later, Snape awarded Hufflepuff another free throw, and for no reason. Then there were cheers and boos from the stands. Obviously, the boos came from the Gryffindor students, and the cheers came from the Slytherin students. Professor Eisen, look quickly, suddenly, Hermione screamed, and Eisen couldn't help shivering. Sighing in his heart, the little girl's voice was high-pitched. Yes, I saw it. Harry is diving down, and it seems that he has found the snitch. Obviously, Harry's beautiful dive not only made Hermione scream, but even the audience exclaimed and cheered. Hurry up, Harry, Hermione folded her hands, then jumped on the seat, cooing uncontrollably, as if she was praying to someone. Aizen saw it clearly, and Harry rushed in Snape's direction. Could it be that Harry wanted to knock Snape off his broomstick in order to avenge his last blow? A strange thought flashed through Aizen. Snape had just activated his broomstick in the air, and before he had time to react, 
he saw a golden shadow whistling past his ear. Then, Harry followed and stopped the dive. Extremely abrupt, Harry suddenly raised his arm, only to see the golden snitch tightly held in his hand. This is the end of the game. After understanding what happened, the stands suddenly erupted. Because this is an unprecedented record, no one knows which time the snitch was caught in such a short period of time in the past. Ah, Harry won. We won. Gryffindor took the lead. Hermione on the side also cheered and screamed along with the crowd, jumping on her seat without saying a word, and threw herself into Aizen's arms, following he hugged. Feeling the petite and weak body in his arms, Aizen was a little dazed. Before he could move, Hermione quickly left his embrace. Hermione's face turned red. She didn't know whether she was embarrassed by her impulsiveness or excited by Gryffindor's victory. On the field, Harry held the snitch and jumped off the broomstick when he was only a foot off the ground. Although it was said that he ended the match with his own hands, until now, he still couldn't believe that he actually succeeded, and he won within five minutes. When the Gryffindor students flooded into the arena, Harry noticed that Snape's face was ugly, his lips were tightly pursed, and he was staring at him. To be honest, I have been using Yegua to read and read books recently, change sources, and read aloud with many timbers, Yegua Yudu Android and Apple are all available. Nice job, Harry Potter. I'm glad you're not thinking about that magic mirror all day, and living life to the fullest. It's really nice. A hand was suddenly on Harry's shoulder, and he looked back. Harry found that it was Dumbledore talking to himself. Professor Eisen, watching the Gryffindor students pouring into the field, Hermione glanced at Eisen beside her. Oh, of course, go celebrate the victory with Harry. Seeing the anticipation and longing in Hermione's eyes, Eisen nodded in support of her idea. Immediately afterwards, the entire Quidditch stadium seemed to usher in a banquet. Harry was carried on the shoulders of the Gryffindor students, who kept cheering and Hermione and Ron were jumping up and down beside them, cheering. Maybe many people don't understand, isn't it just a victory, worthy of so many people's celebration? But in fact, if you know that this victory will allow Gryffindor to end Slytherin's seven consecutive Academy Cup titles, you will understand how reasonable their behavior is. After all, it was a hard-won victory for Gryffindor. An hour after the game ended, Harry finally got away from the entanglement of the crowd and left the locker room alone, intending to send his Nimbus 2000 back to the broom shed. Before entering the competition venue, Harry's mood was depressed, but at this moment, Harry's mood is happy. Because he's really done something great, Harry thought, and Snape will never say that he just has a great name. Walking on the grass, although Harry felt a little wet under his feet, under the influence of his good mood, he felt that the night air was extraordinarily sweet. After delivering the Nimbus 2000 to the broom shed, Harry leaned against the wooden door and looked at Hogwarts. He succeeded. Most importantly, Gryffindor is ahead. To be honest, Harry has been tortured by Snape for the whole semester, so to be able to win a hearty victory in front of Snape, especially when the opponent is a referee, the exhilaration really fascinates Harry. Just as Harry was leaning against the door and thinking about it, he was suddenly caught by a figure. I saw a figure with a hood sneaking down the steps of the main entrance of the castle and quickly galloped in the direction of the Forbidden Forest. Looking at all this, Harry's joy of winning just now faded a lot, because he recognized the footsteps of the figure, which was Snape. Harry didn't expect that the other party would sneak out when everyone was not paying attention. What did he want to do in the Forbidden Forest? Harry was full of doubts in his heart, and before he had time to think about it, he directly took back the broomstick, rode on it, and slid quietly over the castle, following Snape to the Forbidden Lin Fei. However, because the trees in the Forbidden Forest were too dense and it was late, Harry couldn't see where Snape's figure had gone. As Harry's figure continued to descend, and as he flew past the treetops, he finally heard the slightest voice. Harry who heard the voice was shocked, slowed his breathing, and then quietly leaned over and landed on a beech tree. Carefully holding the branch, Harry looked down through the leaves and saw Snape in a shadowy clearing. However, to Harry's surprise, beside Snape, Quirrell was also here. No, don't know. You, why did you, choose to meet here? Severus. Harry noticed that Quirrell seemed to be stuttering more than ever. It's time to find out Snape's secret, Harry thought to himself and concentrated his attention, wanting to hear what Snape would say. Oh. I don't think it should be made public. After all, students shouldn't know about the Philosopher's Stone. Snape's voice was cold, but Harry was taken aback by the revelation. Chapter 33 Harry's Discovery Have you figured out how to subdue Hagrid's monster? Seeing that Quirrell didn't know what to say, Snape directly interrupted him. But, but, Severus, I, Quirrell's pale face seemed to grow even paler. You don't want to be my enemy, Quirrell. Snape looked sullen, as if he would go up and beat him up at any moment. I, I, don't know Dash Harry saw clearly that Quirrell was slowly backing away from Snape's pressure. You know exactly what I mean. Snape interrupted Quirrell again, and then threatened, Your secret little trick. I'll wait. But I, I don't. Then, 
After a while, when you have time to think about who you are loyal to, we will talk again. Snape waved his hand and turned around quickly with a cold face, then covered his head with a cloak and strode out of the forbidden forest. Just then, an owl hooted, almost making Harry fall from the tree in fright. After he steadied himself, he looked down and could only see Quirrell standing there by himself, like a statue. Then, Harry got on his broomstick and flew back secretly. After delivering the broomstick to the broom shed, Harry hurried to the Gryffindor common room on the eighth floor, only to find Ron and Hermione still talking excitedly. Harry, where have you been? Hermione demanded sharply, with a hint of displeasure in her tone. We won. You won. We won too. Without thinking too much, Ron went up and patted Harry on the shoulder hard, and continued to shout, Ha 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 ha. I beat Malfoy's eyes blue now. Neville also beat Crab and Goyle by himself, and he is still unconscious, but Madame Pomfrey said he is fine. Harry showed a dull expression. Obviously, when he was focusing on catching the snitch on the Quidditch pitch, he didn't know that Ron and Neville had conflicts with Malfoy and the others. Don't be like this, let's talk about how you taught Slytherin, everyone is waiting for you. We are having a celebration, and Fred and George stole some cakes from the kitchen. See Harry's it seemed that Ron didn't see him either, and directly pulled Harry to go there. Don't worry about that, find an empty house, I have something to tell you. After regaining his senses, Harry seemed to have thought of something, and his breath suddenly became short of breath. Afterwards, the three found an empty house, especially after Harry confirmed that Peeves hadn't come to make trouble, he told them all about his previous experience of following Snape. So, our analysis is correct. What Lu Wei is guarding is the Philosopher's Stone, and Snape wants to get the Philosopher's Stone by threatening Quirrell. You see, he asked Quirrell if he knew how to subdue Lu Wei. Obviously want to enter the trapdoor below through Lu Wei. Moreover, Snape also mentioned Quirrell's secret trick, which is likely to be another mechanism for guarding the Philosopher's Stone. Maybe there was a lot of magic and witchcraft, and Quirrell cast some anti-dark magic spells in it. Snape needed to disarm it to get the Philosopher's Stone. That is to say, if Quirrell can't resist Snape, the Philosopher's Stone is not safe? Hermione's tone showed a hint of panic, obviously finding it difficult for Quirrell to stop Snape. If that's the case, the Philosopher's Stone will disappear soon. Ron nodded approvingly, obviously not thinking Quirrell would be able to keep the Philosopher's Stone. Should we tell Aizen? Hermione said suddenly, with an inexplicable look in her eyes. But he's just an astronomy professor, will he be Snape's opponent? Ron pouted beside him, feeling that Hermione's proposal was really superfluous. But, don't you think Aizen's magic is very powerful? Hermione's face puffed up, as if she was complaining about Aizen. No way, who would let a handsome guy like Aizen show his hands in front of everyone from time to time? Well, you're right, we can tell Aizen about it. Harry and Ron glanced at each other, seeming to think of the level of magic Aizen displayed. So they nodded and agreed to the proposal. The next day, the three of them came to Aizen's office together after having breakfast in the auditorium early. You guys, what's the matter? Looking at the trio in front of him, Aizen showed a puzzled look. That's right, Aizen's main energy is still on practicing spells and learning alchemy, and he doesn't care much about the progress of the plot. Professor Aizen, do you remember the last time we were looking for Nicole Flamel? After being signaled by Harry and Ron, Hermione finally opened the topic. Yes, you guys think that Snape is going to steal something from Dumbledore and Nicole Flamel. How about it? Did you find anything? After a moment of contemplation, Aizen looked puzzled, and then followed the topic asked. To be honest, it's hard to pretend like you don't know anything. Because he wanted to separate the plot he knew from what the trio had told him, so they couldn't be confused. Yes, Professor Aizen, we found that what Snape was going to steal was the Sorcerer's Stone. Hermione announced the result of the inquiry, and Harry and Ron beside him nodded emphatically. The Philosopher's Stone? A Philosopher's Stone that can turn stones into gold and make people immortal? Aizen's face revealed a look of surprise at the right time. That's right. If Lu Wei is guarding the Sorcerer's Stone, then it's not surprising that Snape wants to steal it. Ron couldn't help but interjected. Seems to give a valid reason why Snape should steal the Philosopher's Stone. In other words, currently the best app for reading and listening to books, Yegwa Reading, Yegwa You Do install the latest version. But, didn't you say that Snape was bitten by Lu Wei during the troll riot last time? How could he steal it? Aizen felt a headache. To be honest, the reasoning ability of these three people is simply terrible, and Aizen even thinks that they are comparable to Sherlock Holmes. Harry saw Snape sneaking into the Forbidden Forest after the game yesterday, Hermione continued, but when he was talking about the Forbidden Forest, seeing Aizen's frown, he sped up his speech and quickly moved to the Forbidden Forest. Harry recounted what he had discovered. That is to say, Harry heard Snape asking Quirrell how to subdue Lu Wei. Aizen wanted to blame Harry for going to the dangerous Forbidden Forest, but the current development of the plot made him ignore this point. That's right, if Snape knew how to subdue Lu Wei, he would have successfully stolen the Philosopher's Stone. Harry couldn't wait to say the conclusion. Obviously, as the little wizard who hated Snape the most, 
Harry never wanted Snape to succeed. Just hope Quirrell doesn't give in to Snape. Ron shrugged and whispered. Apparently, even he didn't think it was safe to hope for that. I see. So, what do you want me to do by telling me this? Do you want to attack Snape directly? But you have to know that all of this is just speculation right now, and there is no direct evidence. Eisen nodded. Then a very important question was asked. That's right. All of this is just the speculation of Harry and others. It's just a speculation made by combining some specious and unfavorable clues pointing to Snape, rather than intuitive evidence. Even if Eisen really agrees with the three of them, there is no way to make a direct move. What's more, he knew that Snape wasn't the one who was going to steal the Philosopher's Stone, but the one who stopped Quirrell from stealing the Philosopher's Stone. Chapter 34 Spoilers as a Last Resort Ah, then what should we do? After hearing Eisen's words, both Harry and Ron showed disappointed expressions. Harry asked directly with an anxious expression on his face. Professor Eisen, why don't you go talk to Professor Dumbledore? At this moment, Hermione suddenly came up with a solution witty. That's right, Professor Eisen. If we say something, Dumbledore must think that we are making up stories to avoid being punished for breaking into the Forbidden Forest. But if the professor says something, Dumbledore will definitely believe it. Ron, after hearing Hermione's words, suddenly had a flash of inspiration and thought of how wonderful this method is. To be honest, I have been using Yegwa to read and read books recently, change sources, and read aloud with many timbers, Yegwa Yudu Android and Apple are all available. For a moment, the three of them showed excited expressions on their faces. However, if I go and tell Dumbledore, he will know about Harry's private entry into the Forbidden Forest. Eisen showed a half-smile expression, and then looked at Harry meaningfully. Then, Professor, you can say that you discovered it yourself, otherwise it's fine. Harry and Hermione looked at each other, but it was Ron who came up with an idea to let Eisen take the blame. Immediately afterwards, the three of them looked at Eisen eagerly, as if they really thought the idea was good. Well, let me think about it. Eisen first smiled, then stood up and said something to the three of them, and then pondered. So, should Dumbledore be told about this? How could he explain everything he knew to Dumbledore himself? Could it be that he misunderstood that he wanted to steal the Philosopher's Stone, so he investigated so much secretly, and then discovered Snape's behavior? Thinking about it, Eisen frowned involuntarily. Because it wasn't impossible, after all, Dumbledore knew exactly who Snape was. Since Dumbledore knew Snape wouldn't do it, wouldn't it be too obvious if Eisen said he found all of this himself? Moreover, once he said that, it meant that he, a passerby professor with a low sense of existence, would receive much more attention. This is very unfavorable to him. So, it's fine to go and explain this to Dumbledore, but it still needs to be done in a manner. For example, it must be pointed out that the trio asked themselves for help, so they went to investigate. Okay, I'll go and talk to Dumbledore, you wait first. Eisen said to a few people after going back and forth in his mind. Then, under their surprise eyes, they left the office. After walking out of the office, Eisen walked towards the principal's office on the 8th floor. To be honest, Hogwarts Castle is really big. If you want to walk through all the corridors, you have to walk at least dozens of miles. Even simply walking from the 1st floor to the 8th floor has to be several miles in length. However, Eisen was not in a hurry, and walked slowly towards the principal's office. On the way, Eisen was still wondering how his telling Dumbledore would affect the plot. However, when Eisen thought that these levels were deliberately set up by Dumbledore for Harry, Eisen felt that there should be no problem. After all, when it comes to the Philosopher's Stone, there's nothing going on around Dumbledore. After a long while, Eisen came to the entrance of the spiral staircase. After walking to the end, he saw a shiny oak door with a bronze knocker with a griffin's head on it. Cockroach Heap fell with Eisen's password, and the door slowly opened, and then Eisen walked in. After entering the principal's office, Eisen saw Dumbledore sitting behind the desk at a glance. His silver-white beard was stretched to his chest, and he was wearing a pair of glasses. He looked at the book in his hand that kept turning the pages, not knowing what information he was looking for. After hearing the sound of the door opening, he put down his book and looked at Eisen. Oh, Professor Eisen, it's rare to come to my place. What's the matter? Seeing that it was Eisen, Dumbledore smiled. In the memories of previous lives, many people have discussed that Dumbledore may be an extremely sinister person. After all, Dumbledore did have a dark side. But Eisen knew that his evil side might have been revealed in his youth. And now, after more than a year of contact, Eisen finds that he has always strictly adhered to a super high moral standard. In other words, Eisen had always known how decent Dumbledore was. So, he never worried about Dumbledore using legitimacy on him. Of course, if Eisen dared to be unfavorable to Harry, or unfavorable to other students, then the result would be difficult to say. Well, the thing is like this. Without thinking too much, Eisen directly explained the cause and effect of the matter. Of course, the key point is that he found out some information with the help of Harry and others, and then made some speculations. Oh, no, Professor Eisen, I have to tell you, Professor Snape is completely trustworthy, 
After hearing what Eisen said, Dumbledore had no other reaction, just shook his head and stated his opinion simply and rudely. Obviously, what Dumbledore meant was that Eisen's speculation was completely unreliable because he trusted Snape so much. Of course, Eisen knows all this, but that's all he can say to get to the point. Well, it seems that I was thinking too much. After a moment of silence, Eisen nodded and shrugged his shoulders. Of course, as to why Snape asked Quirrell whether there was a way to subdue Liu Wei, Eisen felt that it was better not to ask further about these details. It was obvious that Professor Dumbledore had deliberately arranged all of this, so that Harry could get exercise and grow. Otherwise, after Eisen told Dumbledore his speculation, Dumbledore must not have reacted like this. After leaving the principal's office, Eisen quietly breathed a sigh of relief. Although Dumbledore had always been kind, Eisen could always feel an invisible pressure when facing him. He knew that this was caused by the gap in strength. Although Eisen intends to be a passerby professor with a low sense of presence, it's okay to turn around in front of Dumbledore occasionally. After all, his magical powers can grow over time. After the strength grows to a certain level, there is definitely no way to hide it. After returning to the office, Eisen saw Harry and the others whispering, constantly talking about something. After seeing Eisen come back, the three of them immediately stopped talking and looked at him expectantly. Professor Eisen, how is it? Harry couldn't help asking. Well, things may be different from what you think. Eisen gave the three of them a precaution, and seeing their faces froze, he continued, Professor Dumbledore said that he can completely trust Snape. That is to say, even if Professor Dumbledore knew that Snape asked Quirrell about subduing Liu Wei, he didn't believe that Snape would steal the Philosopher's Stone? Suddenly, Ron couldn't help but screamed. Okay, I think we should trust Dumbledore, he is the greatest wizard in the world today. No one can underestimate him. You are the same. Eisen waved his hand, and then solemnly stated his point of view. That's right, from Eisen's point of view, it's a good thing for Harry and others to worry about the school, but after all, they don't know how powerful Dumbledore is, so their vision is still far behind. After a while, the three of them looked at each other and left dejectedly. Chapter 35 Library Conversation, Part 1 In the next few days, as Harry, Ron and Hermione continued to worry, they found that Quirrell was much braver than they had imagined. Even though they noticed that Quirrell looked a lot paler and thinner, he didn't look like he was broken by Snape. Every day after class, Harry, Hermione, and Ron would put their ears to the door when passing through the corridor on the fourth floor and listen carefully to see if there was Liu Wei's low, roaring voice inside. To the relief of the three, Liu Wei didn't have any accidents, and even Snape walked around the school every day, showing an extremely irritable look. It seemed that the Philosopher's Stone was still safe from Snape's possession. Perhaps it was because Quirrell felt that Quirrell, who was directly facing Snape, was under tremendous pressure every day. So whether it was Harry, Ron, or even Hermione, every time they saw each other, they would smile encouragingly. Even, Ron began to persuade other young wizards to stop laughing at Quirrell's stuttering flaw. Of course, unlike Ron and Harry, Hermione, a top student, has more to do. In addition to paying attention to the Philosopher's Stone, she spent most of her time making review plans. To be honest, Eisen was puzzled why Hermione was assigned to Gryffindor instead of Winclaw. Could it be that Hermione's courage, adventure, attribute is more prominent? However, Harry and Ron couldn't care less when they saw Hermione color-coded all the notebooks. Yes, in Ron and Harry's sense of time, there was still a long time before the exam. But for Hermione, it's only 10 weeks. After all, the school has a rule that a young wizard in the first grade must pass the exams of the courses he has learned before he can be promoted to the second grade. Therefore, reviewing is extremely important for Hermione. Hermione had an argument with Ron about it. Unfortunately for Ron and Harry, however, the teachers sided with Hermione, giving them so much homework that it took them a long time to complain. Eisen was very sympathetic to what happened to the little wizards, so he showed mercy and didn't assign much homework, just asking them to review what they had learned before. After all, Eisen is just a professor of astronomy and his courses are basically mixed credits for students. Therefore, he didn't want to embarrass them. It's terrible. I should have started reviewing a month ago. I don't know what happened to me. In the library, Hermione frowned, showing annoyed look. Look Harry, Hermione is nagging again. Ron curled his lips, winking at Harry beside him. Soon, it will be time for the Easter holidays. But for the trio, this holiday is far less joyous than the Christmas holiday. After all, they are busy with tons of homework assigned by their professors. Therefore, Hermione, a top student, devoted all her time to reviewing. She either recited some knowledge about potions or practiced the movement of waving her wand every day. And Harry and Ron had no choice but to spend most of their spare time in the library with Hermione. Well, although Harry and Ron were often yawned, there was always a lot of homework to be done, so they had to work hard. This afternoon, when Eisen was studying ancient runes in the library, he was suddenly interrupted by the arrival of the trio. That's right, in order to learn more about alchemy, Eisen had to start dabbling in ancient runes and potions. But obviously, 
Although there has been some progress during this period of time, there is still a lot of difference in turning the knowledge I have learned into foundation. As for why Aizen spends time on this, or because he wants to go a little deeper on the road of making magic props. So far, Aizen has already stored several supernatural properties in his hands. But whether it's spellcasting characteristics or other characteristics, they are all excellent. During this period of time, Aizen has been speculating whether this is a grade, a magic item with a better grade, and a higher grade of extraordinary characteristics that can be reproduced. On this point, if Aizen can engrave a higher level extraordinary characteristic from the next accessible philosopher's stone, then it will be certain. Therefore, even though Aizen has no way to confirm this conclusion now, he has already made a guess and plans to delve deeper. What if he can refine the philosopher's stone himself in the future? Why don't you review your homework quickly and come to see me? Looking at Hermione who was a little proud in front of him, and Harry and Ron who were looking annoyed at the side, Aizen felt a little headache. At this time, I am a passerby, why can they still find me here? Professor Aizen, we have no way to remember these. What can you do? Ron and Harry glanced at each other and placed a thousand miraculous herbs and mushrooms in their hands in front of Aizen. Seeing this, Hermione couldn't help but rolled her eyes. You mean, let me help you? After hearing Harry's words, Aizen was stunned. Yes, Professor Aizen, I think you can help us. Ron nodded and winked at Aizen, making it look like he was being funny. Aizen froze for a moment and then saw Hermione holding back a smile behind the two and knew that they were probably joking. However, with their personalities, how could they suddenly escape like this? Well, I do know a way to make it easier for you to review. After pondering for a while, Aizen did not expose them, but said something meaningful. Ah, Professor Aizen, can you really help us? Ron, who had no hope at first, suddenly became interested when he heard Aizen say this. Immediately, he asked impatiently. Even Harry and Hermione next to him looked at Aizen in surprise. However, Aizen smiled and nodded without answering. Because he does know some methods, but, for them now, I'm afraid they won't be able to use them. If they find that they can't use it after saying it, will they suffer a bigger blow? What's the solution, Aizen? Don't be a fool. Seeing Aizen's appearance, Ron became anxious. In other words, currently the best app for reading and listening to books, Yegwa Reading, Yegwa You Do install the latest version. I know there are three ways. However, since they came to make fun of themselves, it doesn't matter if they say it. Thinking like this, Aizen stretched out three fingers. Harry and Ron exchanged glances, surprise on their faces. Even Hermione at the side was very curious about the three ways Aizen could help them review their homework. The first way, do you know Felicia Potion? When saying this, Aizen deliberately lowered his voice and looked around for a while before anyone could say it. Felix Felicia? What's that? Several people looked at each other, and finally Hermione who was the most curious asked. A very difficult potion, taking it can bring people good luck for the whole day, no matter what they do, they will feel smooth. Aizen said slowly. To be honest, the Felicity Elixir that can add a lucky aura to people is indeed a bug-level potion. But it is a pity that this kind of potion is very difficult to brew, and it even takes several months, and there must be no mistakes in the steps, otherwise it will fail. But I don't think you can use it, because it is not only very difficult to cook, but also takes a very long time, almost six months. Before a few people showed their happy expressions, Aizen put his The Defect Speaks Out. Chapter 36 Library Conversation, Part 2 So. Wouldn't it be the same for the remaining two methods? Harry was shocked all of a sudden, and even felt that Professor Eisen was just teasing them. On the other hand, Hermione's eyes lit up, obviously showing great interest in the magic potion of Felix Felicia. Uh, there is another way. Do you know the founder of Hogwarts? Eisen didn't answer directly, but asked a question instead. I know, Professor Eisen. There are four houses in Hogwarts, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Slytherin. As if in class, Hermione took the lead to answer. During the Middle Ages, when recognized as the four greatest wizards, Godric Gryffindor, Roina Lewin Kalaw, Helga Hufflepuff, and Salazar Slytherin jointly created the Hogwarts School. Due to different teaching concepts, they established four different colleges in Hogwarts under their own names. Ravenclaw chooses students with extraordinary intelligence, Slytherin chooses students from pure blood families, Gryffindor chooses students who are brave and adventurous, and Hufflepuff treats all students equally. After Hermione talked eloquently and told what she knew, Harry and Ron were still in a daze. Apparently, Miss Noatal's moments are always like this. For Hermione, the contents of Hogwarts, a school history, will never be forgotten. That's right. But I have to say, they all left behind very powerful treasures. Aizen nodded at Hermione, gave her an appreciative look, and continued her conversation. Treasure. Upon hearing about the treasure, Ron became interested immediately. But, does this have anything to do with the second method? Although Harry was also very interested, he didn't understand what Aizen's purpose was for saying this. Among them, 
The treasure left by Ms. Royna Lawan Kelluo is a crown that can increase the wisdom of wearing it. Immediately afterwards, Aizen didn't make a fool of it and said the answer directly. Increased wisdom. So, just wearing it will make you smarter. Ron exclaimed, a look of desperation in his eyes. No way, Ron did not perform very well in the trio, so he has always had some low self-esteem. And if Lewin Kelluo's crown can really increase wisdom, wouldn't anyone who wears it become a schoolmaster? The three little wizards looked at Aizen expectantly, and it goes without saying that they wanted to know the whereabouts of Lawan Kelluo's crown. But obviously, I don't know where Ron Claw's diadem is, and no one knows where it is now. After seeing Harry, Ron, and Hermione all look expectant, Aizen took a cold breath the child poured down. Professor Aizen, you must have done it on purpose, right? Ron looked at Aizen with a resentful expression, as if he had done something heinous. Okay, there is a third method. I promise it will be useful. Seeing this, Aizen didn't continue to tease them and quickly talked about the third method. That's right, the method Aizen intends to talk about is actually the question C tactic used by his teacher in his previous life. Aizen said that Harry, Ron and Hermione can ask each other questions and pick out the wrong questions for targeted memory and learning after finishing. Repeat this review over and over again. As long as the amount is enough, the test scores will definitely improve. When Aizen said this method, the three of them suddenly showed emotions. In fact, Aizen knew that this method was basically not very useful for Hermione, but it should be of great help to Harry and Ron. It's just that I don't know if they can persist. After all, Aizen himself has deeply felt how terrifying the experience of being dominated by the sea tactics is. I hope they can stick to it. Aizen silently sent blessings to the two from the bottom of his heart. Okay, I've told you all the methods, don't fail the next exam. I still have something to do, so I won't disturb your study. After providing a good idea for study, Aizen planned to slip away. There is no way. Aizen likes to do the thing of flicking off the clothes and hiding the merit and fame. Seeing Professor Aizen leaving, Harry and Ron looked at each other, wondering what they were thinking. Harry, Ron, I think the method Professor Aizen said is quite good. We can try it. Hermione, on the other hand, couldn't wait to try the sea of questions tactic after Aizen left. But, Hermione, you don't have to. Anyway, you already know everything? Harry showed a puzzled look. Obviously, he was very aware of how strong Hermione's learning ability was. No, the learning method Professor Aizen said is very suitable for review. Oh, it's too bad. We should have asked Professor Aizen earlier, Hermione retorted in the middle, suddenly thought of something, and showed an annoyed gesture. That's right. If you had asked Professor Aizen earlier, Hermione, you've reviewed everything by now. An angry sarcasm appeared on Ron's face. Hagrid, what are you doing in the library? Just when Harry wanted to stop the two from arguing, he found a tall figure entering the library. Ron and Hermione stopped talking, and instead looked in the direction Harry turned his head. I saw Hagrid wearing a moleskin coat, walking over with a kick. Moreover, he seemed to be hiding something behind his back. Just take a look, hey, what are you doing here? Are you still looking for Nicole Flamel? After being questioned by Harry, Hagrid first answered evasively, and then forcibly changed the subject, but what he didn't expect was that his appearance attracted the ideas of the three of them. Oh, come on, we've already figured out who Nico Flamel is. Ron showed a smug expression. We also know that what Lu Wei is guarding is the Philosopher's Stone. Hush, before Ron could speak, Hagrid interrupted him looking around quickly to see if anyone was listening. Stop yelling. What the hell are you doing? Hagrid warned them with wide-eyed eyes. Obviously, such a highly confidential matter cannot be spoken out in public. To be honest, I have been using Yegwa to read and read books recently, change sources, and read aloud with many timbers, Yegwa Yudu Android and Apple are all available. To be honest, we do have a few things we want to ask you about the mechanism that guards the Sorcerer's Stone. Besides Lu Wei guarding it, there is also, Harry suddenly remembered the secret trick Snape said about Coral so I just asked. Shoo, listen, come and find me later, but remember, I didn't promise to tell you anything, so don't talk nonsense here, lest people think I told you. Remember, some things are not students should know. Hagrid nodded to Harry, then stomped away again. It seems that Hagrid is going to tell us some secrets. Harry looked at Hagrid's back and whispered. But why did Hagrid come to the library? What else did he hide behind his back? Hermione's question pointed to the point. Could it be related to the Philosopher's Stone? Chapter 37 Surprises Brought by Hands on Work I'll go and see what book Hagrid was looking for just now, Ron said and rushed out quickly. People who saw this scene might think that he was very active to help, but in fact he knew that he was too tired from reading. So I want to find something to do. Two minutes later, Ron was back with Hermione and Harry again. I saw him holding a large stack of thick books in his arms and then fell heavily on the table. I know what Hagrid is looking for, it's a dragon. Ron whispered after leaving the book on the table, Hagrid is looking for information about dragons. Look at these, Guide to Raising Dragons, From the Hatch the Egg to Nirvana, Species of Dragons of Great Britain and Ireland. 
Oh, I see. Hagrid has always wanted a dragon. He said so the first time I met him. Harry gave a look of enlightenment. But it's against the law. Ron's face became serious. In 1709, the Ministry of Magic passed a law banning dragon breeding. After all, if people keep dragons in their back gardens, it's hard to hide the truth. Muggles to get their attention to us. Moreover, raising dragons is a very dangerous thing. Charlie was burned by a wild dragon in Romania, and he can still see a terrible scar on his arm. Will those dragons grow so big? Harry wondered why dragons could be easily spotted by muggles. Yes, it starts out small, but it grows fast, to the size of a house in a matter of weeks. So it's part of the ministry's job to hide these dragons from muggles. Some after the muggles saw the wild dragon, the wizards of the Ministry of Magic had to cast a spell to make them forget about it. Maybe it was because the big brother Charlie raised dragons in Romania. So for this knowledge, Ronit is still very clear. Then, why did Hagrid search for these materials? What exactly is he trying to do? Hermione asked the most crucial question. An hour later, the trio snuck into the gamekeeper's cabin, intending to have a good talk with Hagrid. At this time, Aizen was busy making the first magic prop in his life. Leaning on the chair, Aizen carefully observed a round mirror placed on the desk. The mirror is about the size of a palm, and looks ordinary from the outside. There is nothing strange about it. But in fact, this is the first alchemy item that Aizen has spent energy making during this time. The observation mirror. After having a basic understanding and research on alchemy, and studying ancient runes and potions for a period of time, he can finally try to make magic props by himself. The mirror in front of me is an item similar to the Marauder's map in the original book. Of course, it is said to be similar, but its function is far worse. It was the first time to make magic items through alchemy. Aizen knew that his level was still average, so he just applied some very simple magic. The book chasing app recommended to me by an old book friend who has known me for 10 years, yet we're reading. It's really easy to use. I rely on reading and listening to books to pass the time while driving and before going to bed. You can download Yegwoyu do here. For example, this mirror Aizen actually only casts two spells, an area detection spell and a reveal spell. What the detection magic detects is not people, but pure terrain and environment, and what is revealed is also terrain and environment. Of course, since only two magics were applied, Aizen made the combination of these two magics the best it can do at the moment. But having said that, it's amazing that the Marauder's map is fully functional showing the names and real-time activities of everyone in Hogwarts. But the mirror made by Aizen can only show the terrain and environment of Hogwarts. Of course, the mirror made by Aizen has another advantage, that is, even if he leaves Hogwarts to go to other places, he can still observe the terrain environment within a radius of 5 miles from the mirror. The observation target of the Marauder's map can only be Hogwarts school. From this point of view, the mirror made by Aizen can basically be regarded as a small map in the game. The effect seems to be great, but when you think about it carefully, it doesn't seem to be of much use to wizards. Because for wizards, if they want to explore the secrets of a certain place, they can directly hide it with the illusion spell or other magic props and then go directly to explore it. If it is a hidden place that has been cast with powerful magic, such as a place hidden by the fidelity curse, although wizards cannot detect it, it is also impossible to detect it with the mirror made by Aizen. So for now, the first alchemy item that Aizen is currently making is just a little more convenient in terms of detection. On the whole, the role of this mirror is more like a real-time high-resolution satellite, which can display all terrain environments within 5 miles around Aizen, and Aizen can observe a certain location as he wants. Although it cannot directly detect people, Aizen can directly observe a place to see if there are people. However, even though Aizen knew that the first magic item he made was mediocre, he was still very happy. Because this represents an important step for him on the road of alchemy. Is it necessary to consume a miraculous feature to reproduce it when you discover extraordinary features, perfect observational features? Just as Aizen was holding the mirror in his hand, he was shocked by an unexpected reminder. Good guy, this is too exaggerated. Aizen couldn't help muttering to himself. To be honest, he originally thought that this magic item was nothing at all. After all, it was his first attempt, but he didn't expect it to directly give a perfect level extraordinary characteristic. However, when he saw the name of the feature, Aizen showed a thoughtful look. Presumably, such a feature is the core function of this mirror. In other words, if Aizen integrates this perfect level observation feature, he can freely observe the surrounding terrain within 5 miles without using props? How should I put it? It feels really powerful, especially when combined with apparition, as long as it is observed within a 5 mile range, it can be teleported. But Aizen feels that with the line of sight enhancement feature and the beyond line of sight feature, it seems that it can teleport a little further. However, the only thing that makes Aizen particularly excited is that as long as he integrates this feature, he can observe all environments within 5 miles in real time, anytime, anywhere. And, just like the function of this mirror, he can have a kind of God's perspective. At the very least, with such characteristics, Aizen feels that he is no longer afraid of being attacked. 
Moreover, after integrating such a feature, it seems that you can take a peek at it, a hymn. Anyway, it is indeed a very powerful feature, so it is reasonable to be rated as a perfect level by Goldfinger. Only in this way, Aizen's plan had to be changed. Originally, he planned to try to reproduce the extraordinary characteristics from the Philosopher's Stone, and then select the flight characteristics for fusion. But now that there is a perfect level observation characteristic, it must first integrate this characteristic. As for the flight characteristics, can only be postponed. Chapter 38 Peeping For the time being, this perfect level observation feature has not been reproduced, but Aizen suddenly showed a smirk while holding the observation mirror. Then, with a movement of his mind, ripples appeared in the center of the observation mirror like the surface of a lake. Then the mirror reveals the scene inside the Hogwarts library. But as Aizen kept scanning the library, he couldn't find the trio. Is it not in the library? With a thought, Aizen's gaze came to the Gryffindor common room again. Here, Aizen saw other young wizards, including Neville's figure, but he couldn't find the trio. Strange? Could it be that the question C tactics I handed over to them were useless? Although he was puzzled in his heart, Aizen continued to search. Two minutes later, several people were found in Hagrid's hut on the edge of the hunting ground. Watching Harry and Ron and Hermione sitting on the bench talking to Hagrid, Aizen had a smile on his face. However, at this moment, Aizen discovered a problem. Although his observation mirror can observe people by observing a certain place in real time, and can see very clearly, but there is no way to hear any sound. This is indeed a problem, but for Aizen, it seems that there is no way to solve it for the time being. Or, Aizen could learn lip reading so he might be able to read what they're saying. However, this is just a thought. He has no free time to learn lip language. Therefore, Aizen dropped the idea as soon as it came up. After all, he didn't make the scope for spying on someone's conversation. So, what was Harry talking to Hagrid about? Aizen saw that Harry was talking to Hagrid, and Hermione and Ron looked at Hagrid eagerly, but Hagrid looked very serious, as if he was worried about something. Then, Hermione spoke, with a slightly flattering air, causing Hagrid to puff out his chest. Of course, Aizen didn't know what they were talking about, but presumably it was about the Philosopher's Stone. After all, the trio already knew that the Philosopher's Stone was guarded by Hagrid's pet Fluffy. Aizen continued to look for a while, then saw Hagrid, Harry and others turned their eyes to the fire in the fireplace. Aizen turned his gaze away and saw a large black egg placed under the fire. This is Hagrid's Norse Ridgeback? Aizen is quite familiar with this plot. He knew that this dragon egg was won by Hagrid playing cards with someone outside. But what Hagrid didn't know was that someone deliberately lost to Hagrid in order to get close to him, so as to obtain a way to subdue Lu Wei, so as to pass through the trapdoor smoothly. Of course, when it comes to the life of a dragon, Aizen still wants to complain. That is, the dragons in the West look like lizards with wings, and their appearance is really ugly. However, dragons in this world, no matter what species they are, are very powerful magical animals. Therefore, for wizards, dragons are very dangerous. It's just that Aizen is more curious about how Dumbledore discovered the twelve uses of dragon's blood. Do you draw dragon blood for experiments every day? As for the twelve uses of dragon blood, Aizen is also very curious. Because the original book seems to only mention one use, which is as a stove cleaner. But Aizen felt that this kind of use was too wasteful. After all, why waste dragon's blood to make magic cleaners when cleaning spells can do it? Aizen couldn't figure this out. After spending about 20 minutes in Hagrid's hut, the trio bid farewell and left. Before leaving, Harry said a few words to Hagrid, as if he was telling him something, but Hagrid waved his hand and didn't care. In the following time, apart from practicing spells and teaching himself alchemy, Aizen took time to watch the trio every night. As Aizen expected, the trio was completely busy with the homework assigned by the teachers. Moreover, he found that the question C tactics he mentioned had already begun to be practiced by them. Aizen felt very relieved whenever he saw the scene where the three of them worked on the questions with a bitter face after they asked each other. Perhaps, this is the pain I have experienced, and let others experience it. Judging from the expressions of the three of them, Hermione felt that she should be fine, but Harry and Ron looked almost crazy, but Aizen couldn't help laughing. Of course, none of this mattered to Aizen. He still gives astronomy lessons to little wizards every Wednesday night. After teaching the students the names of the major planets and satellites in the solar system, as well as the orbits of the planets, Aizen continued to teach them some simple knowledge of galaxies and constellations. For young wizards, the content of the astronomy class is mainly used in conjunction with the divination class. Therefore, Aizen didn't pay much attention to whether those little wizards studied seriously and whether they planned to mix credits in astronomy class. Of course, in the process of teaching, Aizen will inevitably include some private goods in it. For example, tell them that Muggles launched the Hubble telescope that can observe the depths of the universe as early as 1990, and then arouse the amazement of little wizards. Let them subtly believe that Muggles are not stupid vulnerable groups. Although Aizen doesn't know what the effect will be, as long as he instills a concept in them, his goal will be achieved. Harry, Ron and Hermione, 
The three are like ascetics, living a life of study in dire straits. But bad things always follow. One day, Hagrid informs Harry through Hedwig the Owl that his dragon is about to emerge from its shell. Finally, under the persuasion of Ron and Harry, Hermione followed them to Hagrid's hut to watch the dragon eggs hatch. But unfortunately, this kind of thing was discovered by Malfoy of Slytherin. When Eisen saw through the scope that Malfoy would often look at the trio with ill intentions, he knew something bad was brewing. Poor Harry, poor Hagrid. Knowing that the news of Hagrid's dragon raising has been exposed, in order to prevent him from being reported by Malfoy, the trio will go to Hagrid to persuade him whenever they are free from school. The opinion of Harry and others is to let Hagrid release the dragon, but Hagrid refuses because Norbert is too young to die. But apparently, in a week, Noble has tripled in size, and in a few weeks, he will be bigger than Hagrid's cabin. Finally, after a friendly conversation, Hagrid finally agreed to the solution proposed by Harry, that is, to send Norbert to Charlie, who was studying dragons in Romania, and finally Charlie would release Norbert. Afterwards, Ron wrote a letter to Big Brother Charlie in Romania, explaining the ins and outs of the matter. For the next week, the trio practiced sea tactics while waiting for news from Charlie. At the same time, they also had to worry about Malfoy's report. To be honest, I have been using Yegua to read and read books recently, change sources, and read aloud with many timbers, Yegua Yudu Android and Apple are all available. There has never been a time when they felt that life was so difficult. Chapter 39 A New Curse That Nearly Lost Control On Wednesday night, Eisen returned to the faculty residence after teaching the students an astronomy class. As before, Eisen spent half an hour on alchemy and ancient rune research as usual. Then, half an hour was spent on spell practice and transfiguration practice. In fact, based on Eisen's current level of enchantment and transfiguration, if there is not a big breakthrough, there will be no obvious improvement. But he still insists on practicing every day. The purpose is to keep himself in a state of being familiar with magic all the time. In Eisen's view, practicing enough times is always beneficial. At the very least, for his own comprehensive physical fitness, which has grown to three times that of ordinary people, it can play a role in continuous development and mastery. In addition, in the process of practicing spells and transfiguration in recent days, Eisen has also thought about developing a combat method, which is to combine the flying spell, levitation spell, and transfiguration to make a flying sword and return to the clan. Means. The book chasing app recommended to me by an old book friend who has known me for 10 years, yet we're reading. It's really easy to use. I rely on reading and listening to books to pass the time while driving and before going to bed. You can download Yegwo Yudu here. However, after thinking about it for a while, Eisen felt that it was too fancy and felt that it would be better to turn all swords into a sharp blade to attack. So Eisen gave up. However, when studying various combat methods, Eisen suddenly had a flash of inspiration and felt that a combat method might be very clever. That is to combine Whirlwind Sweep and Transfiguration and then use it to attack. Whirlwind Sweep is just a household spell that conjures a whirlwind to sweep away the stain. But Eisen had a whim. If he summoned the whirlwind and at the same time let the transfiguration work on it, turning it into a series of continuously rotating wind blades, wouldn't it turn a cleansing spell with no attack power into a lethal one? A powerful spell. After all, Eisen can be said to have fully mastered spells such as the cleansing curse, and transfiguration has already been able to transform individual elements. So combining them to develop a new spell should theoretically not be a problem for him. So, after the spell practice and transfiguration practice, it was time for Eisen to experiment with new spells. Whirlwind strangling, Eisen chanted the incantation, swung his wand in his right hand, and saw a small tornado appear on the table. This small tornado seemed to be made of wind blades, and it smashed the entire table into pieces in an instant. After a period of research, Eisen finally developed a new spell. To be honest, this definitely caught Eisen by surprise. Originally, he thought that at his own level, it was impossible to develop a new spell, but he didn't expect the combination of cleansing spell and transfiguration to be so smooth. Hiss. The hissing sound caused by the continuous cutting of the air by the wind blade tornado interrupted Aizen's thoughts, but after regaining consciousness, Aizen was startled by the sight in front of him. After the wind blade tornado shredded the desk, it grew rapidly. In the blink of an eye, it had grown to the size of a person, and it kept spinning as if it wanted to suck in everything else in the room. Even Aizen himself faintly felt a pulling force. With this effect, could it be that this new spell is a spell that can cause continuous damage? Aizen's complexion changed, and he immediately thought of another exaggerated spell, the Fire Calendar Curse. It is said that the Lihua Curse can burn mission substances, and as long as it is not cracked, it can burn forever. The spell stops, Aizen waved his wand, trying to stop the Wind Blade Tornado by breaking the spell. But I didn't expect that there would be no effect at all. Aizen's face darkened, and he didn't have time to think about it. He first put on an armor to protect himself and then used all his strength to cast the transformation technique, directly acting on the wind blade tornado. Then, under Aizen's gaze, the wind blade tornado gradually became smaller, 
and then dissipated in the room. Aizen was relieved to see that transfiguration could end the spell of whirlwind. Fortunately, it works, otherwise, I'm afraid it will cause a lot of damage to Hogwarts school. Aizen had a premonition in his heart. If not stopped, this spell could even destroy the entire Hogwarts castle. However, Aizen felt a little headache when he thought that the whirlwind he developed could not be controlled freely. Because in Aizen's imagination, the situation of perfect mastery of this spell should be terminated at any time according to one's own will. But what I didn't expect was that the combination of transfiguration and whirlwind caused an inexplicable change, forming a very stable balance. It is this balance that makes the wind blade tornado released by whirlwind sweep continue to run. Moreover, with Aizen's current attainments in transfiguration, with all his strength, he could only slightly interfere with this stable balance, thus cracking it. Aizen had a hunch that if his transfiguration was improved again, he should be able to reach the level of reciting spells. Thinking of this, Aizen smiled wryly. Restored as before, a restoration curse was cast, and Aizen's room was restored, and the table fragments that had been crushed by the wind blade tornado were also reassembled and restored to their original state. Leaning on the bed, Aizen fell silent. I thought it was just a simple attack spell, but I didn't expect to develop a spell with destructive power and damage range far beyond imagination. At the moment, Aizen has already made up his mind. It is best not to try to use the whirlwind to strangle this spell before the transfiguration technique goes a step further. Moreover, even if you want to use it, you can't let it last for too long and let it grow. Because just now when he interfered with the whirlwind strangling with his transfiguration, he tried his best to intervene only a little bit. If the windblade tornado grows to a height of more than 10 meters, or even tens of meters, Aizen may not be able to do anything about it with all his transfiguration. Interfered. At that time, Aizen can't imagine what the consequences will be if the wind blade tornado loses control. Perhaps, as time goes by, after the magic power in Aizen increases and becomes stronger, he can still interfere with it to a certain extent. But as long as transfiguration doesn't go further, for Aizen, the spell still risks getting out of hand. Therefore, Aizen felt that it would be best to wait until the research on transfiguration was advanced before he could use this spell as he wished. However, Aizen suddenly thought of a problem, and that was the problem that the previously used cracking spell was ineffective. It stands to reason that the breaking spell can usually be used to break all spells except the three unforgivable curses. But in fact, Aizen also knew that some two special spells and some more complicated spells could only be deciphered with specific counter spells. So, is the whirlwind strangling transformed by the combination of whirlwind sweep and transformation a special spell, or is it complicated enough? Thinking of this, Aizen couldn't help but mutter. Well, no matter what, when you experiment with new spells in the future, you have to prepare in advance. After thinking about it, Aizen felt that his behavior of experimenting with new spells directly in the dormitory was too rash. Thinking back, a layer of cold sweat would faintly break out on Aizen's forehead. If this really got out of control, I'm afraid being imprisoned in Azkaban would be the best result. It was at this time that Aizen thought of Luna's mother in the original book. It seems that the other party died because of a failed test of the spell. It seems that the wizarding world also has lessons learned from the past. After calming down his complicated emotions, Aizen looked at the time and it was actually close to 12 o'clock in the evening. Just as he was going to sleep, he suddenly thought of something and took out the observation mirror. Originally, Aizen thought that Hermione, Harry, and the others had already fallen asleep, but unexpectedly, he saw several sneaky figures in the Gryffindor common room. Strange. Isn't get out of class already over? Why haven't they slept yet? Aizen suddenly showed a curious expression. Could it be that they are planning something? Chapter 40. Harry's Request for Help. I saw Hermione and Harry sitting in the Gryffindor common room, they didn't speak, just sat there quietly, as if waiting for something. Just when the time came to 12 o'clock, the portrait hole was suddenly opened, and then Ron's figure appeared. It turned out that Ron didn't know what he was doing in Harry's invisibility cloak, and he just came back now. However, when seeing the invisibility cloak, Aizen suddenly remembered a question he asked Flittick when he was learning apparition, that is, whether he can apparate himself after applying the illusion spell to himself. At the time, the answer Flittick gave was no. The reason is that when operating, the oppressiveness of space travel will invalidate the disillusionment spell. The book chasing app recommended to me by an old book friend who has known me for 10 years, yet we're reading. It's really easy to use. I rely on reading and listening to books to pass the time while driving and before going to bed. You can download Yegwo you do here. But after seeing the invisibility cloak at this time, Aizen suddenly felt that it might be possible to reproduce its invisibility characteristics, and then he could become invisible and apparate again. And, as far as Aizen knew, Harry's invisibility cloak was also one of the Deathly Hallows, the most effective of all invisibility cloaks. Therefore, originally Aizen thought that since he knew the disillusionment curse, there was no need to recreate the characteristics of the invisibility cloak, but looking at it now, he still felt that if he had enough miraculous characteristics in the future, he could reproduce it. 
When Ron returned to the Gryffindor common room, the atmosphere seemed to come alive. The three started talking. However, Aizen noticed that Ron had a bloody handkerchief wrapped around his hand. It looked like he was injured. Combined with the information Aizen saw through the observation mirror earlier. Immediately, Aizen knew how Ron's hand was injured. Needless to say, it must have been bitten by the dragon raised by Hagrid. Before a few people could say a few words, Harry ran to the window and let an owl in. Then, he got a note from the owl. When the three heads leaned over to look at the contents of the note, Aizen had a thought, and the sight of the observation mirror changed and narrowed, aiming at the note in Harry's hand. Then, the above content was displayed in front of him. Dear Ron, how are you? Thanks for writing to me. I'm happy to adopt the Norwegian Ridgeback, but it's not easy getting him here. I figured the best thing to do would be to send it first to a few friends of mine who are coming to see me next week. The trouble is, they must not be seen illegally carrying a dragon. Can you take the Ridgeback to the tallest tower at midnight on a Saturday? They can meet you there and take the dragon away while it's dark. Please write back to me as soon as possible. Love you, Charlie. Seeing this, Eisen had already expected it. That's right, because Malfoy found out about Hagrid raising dragons, Harry and others had to persuade Hagrid to send Norbert away and send him to Charlie Weiss in Romania. And this time the letter sent back by the owl was written by Charlie, asking them to send Noble to the astronomy tower on Saturday night when it was dark, so that Noble would be taken away by Charlie's friends smoothly. However, after knowing this, Eisen looked at it with the mentality of participating or not. After all, this was just an episode, and there was no need for Eisen to worry too much about them. The next day, Eisen came to the library after completing his daily spellcasting practice in the Room of Requirement. Unlike usual, today Eisen did not look for some esoteric alchemy books to read, nor did he study ancient runes in depth, but took out a few pages to write the script. That's right, because when Eisen and his father registered Eisen Film and Television Company before, they agreed to write scripts for the company. So, Eisen took the opportunity to write the screenplay while relaxing. Since Eisen has already stepped into the wizarding world, he doesn't care much about the film company. As for how much money the film company can make, Eisen doesn't care much anymore. Of course, when the parents didn't know about wizards, Eisen could come up with more scripts and let the film company make more money to make them happy. Therefore, Eisen simply copied the script of The Man from Earth. Although it has been decades since Eisen actually watched the movie, the details of the plot have long been unclear. But he still knows the general pattern of the movie. In general, it is an old antique hidden among ordinary people. And the story of Versailles is low-key in front of a group of people. Through repeated dialogues and answers, it is revealed what the protagonist has done in history, how powerful he is, and so on. In fact, Eisen did not intend to write all the details clearly. He only needs to give the general story frame, and then ask his father to find some screenwriters to fill in and improve it. After an hour, Eisen had finished writing the script framework. However, just as Eisen put away the manuscript and left, he bumped into Hermione and Harry. Don't hurry up and review. What's the matter here? Seeing their worried looks, Eisen knew that they were worrying about Hagrid's Norwegian spiny back noble. However, Eisen still pretended not to know anything and asked, Well, Professor Eisen, can I ask you a favor? Hearing Eisen's question, Hermione seemed to be a different person, with a sudden look of embarrassment on her face. Tell me. Eisen nodded for Hermione to continue. Afterwards, Hermione and Harry explained the matter one by one. You mean, Hagrid raised a dragon, but Malfoy found out, so he wants to send that dragon away? After the two finished speaking, Eisen briefly summed up what they meant. Yes, the Ministry of Magic prohibits private dragon breeding, so if Malfoy reports on Hagrid, Hagrid will definitely be punished. Harry nodded, expressing his concerns. Likewise, Hermione next to her nodded. So, how do you want me to help? Although he knew their purpose, Eisen was even more puzzled. After all, Eisen felt that he couldn't help much either. Could it be that he was going to go on a night tour with them and escort them as a professor? Professor Eisen, Noble is a bit big. Can you help transport it to the astronomy tower? Harry said with an embarrassed look on his face. Wait, how did they do it in the original book? Oh, it seems that Noble was packed in a box, covered with an invisibility cloak, and secretly moved to the astronomy tower. Thinking of this, Eisen's face became a little weird. Then, after a quick glance at Hermione and Harry, they were still looking at him expectantly. Could it be that he saw that he was here alone? So he grabbed the coolies that could be used and used them hard? Haven't you tried whether you can fit Norbert into the ring? After pondering for a while, Eisen pointed to the rings in their hands. Having said that, the storage rings in their hands were still given by Eisen. Tried it, but Professor Eisen, the entrance of this ring is too small. It doesn't seem to fit. Harry nodded, then shook his head. Entrance too small? After listening to Harry's words, Eisen nodded thoughtfully. That's right, although the ring expanded by the untraceable stretching curse is called a storage ring by him, it is not a storage ring in fantasy novels. You can directly use your mind to put things in and out out of thin air without going through the entrance. 
The storage ring was just Aizen using the unmarking stretch charm to make a ring with a hollow section with a tiny opening in it. Although some books, wands, and other commonly used items can be inserted through the entrance, living creatures like Norbert cannot be inserted through the entrance of the ring. In other words, if a living thing is to be stuffed into a space where the untraceable stretching curse has been applied, it must be able to be stuffed in through the entrance. For example, a tent with the no trace stretching charm cast apparently has an entrance large enough for people to enter and exit. Of course, it is true to say so, but the wizarding world has a way to perfectly solve this problem. That is the shrinking curse of speedy shrinking. Whenever this spell is cast on living or non-living things, its size can be instantly reduced. In the original book, Barty Crouch Jr. pretended to be Mad-Eye Moody in the classroom. He used Zoom Big to make the spider many times bigger, and then used Zoom Down to turn the spider back to its original size. The size of. Obviously, this is an extremely useful spell. Chapter 41 Charms Teaching Speaking of which, Aizen still knows a lot about the shrinking spell. Because when I was living in the Leaky Cauldron and Diagon Alley, I was troubled by the inconvenient carrying of items due to the inability to stretch without trace, so I also specially learned the spell of enlargement and reduction. It's just that, for first-year wizards, Hermione and Harry obviously haven't learned the spell yet. Although this spell is not very difficult, it also has certain requirements for the strength of the magic power in the little wizard's body. Therefore, Aizen wasn't sure if they could actually cast the Shrinking Curse smoothly. Moreover, even if the Shrinking Curse is successfully cast, it is still a question of whether Norbert can be shrunk to a certain extent. However, no matter what, teach them to try. Then, I think the Shrinking Charm should be of some use to you. Thinking of this, Aizen then introduced the effect of using the Shrinking Charm to Hermione and Harry. This spell is great, it will be very convenient to carry things with you in the future. After listening to Aizen's introduction, Hermione couldn't help screaming, and looked at Aizen with a flushed face, and the admiration in her eyes was even stronger. Very. Meanwhile, Harry's eyes lit up immediately. That's right, in fact, Aizen also knows that the little wizards of Hogwarts usually have a lot of luggage. Whether they leave Hogwarts during the holidays or return to Hogwarts, they have to bring a big bag with them. Luggage, very inconvenient. Therefore, if you take the opportunity to teach them the shrinking curse, it can not only solve their current problems, but also make them no longer have to worry about the problem of carrying items with them in the future. If it is used with the storage ring, it will have a better effect. The book chasing app recommended to me by an old book friend who has known me for 10 years, yet we're reading. It's really easy to use. I rely on reading and listening to books to pass the time while driving and before going to bed. You can download Yegwo Yudu here. By the way, where is Ron? Why don't you see where Ron is? At this time, Aizen suddenly looked at Harry and Hermione with a look of, I just realized why I didn't see Ron. After making this expression, even Aizen couldn't help admiring his acting skills. After all, he had seen Ron's injury through the scope, and it might have lived at Madame Pomfrey's, but he still showed a puzzled expression just right. This, Ron was bitten by Norbert, and he is lying in the school hospital in a very bad condition. As soon as Ron was mentioned, the two of them suddenly showed worried expressions on their faces. And, to make matters worse, Malfoy also got the news from Ron that we were going to send Norbert away on Saturday night. Hermione's cheeks puffed up, and there was a hint of anger in her tone. Send Norbert away? Although Aizen knew all this, he couldn't reveal the fact that he already knew. After all, he couldn't explain why he'd been spying on them all the time. Afterwards, Hermione and Harry had to tell Aizen everything. It's what Aizen already knew, about how Hagrid won a dragon egg from a stranger, and then hatched it smoothly and was named Norbert, and then how he was discovered by Malfoy, and then he made the promise to Charles of Romania, etc. The two spoke one word at a time, and in a few minutes they explained the cause and effect of the matter. In other words, Malfoy also found out from Ron that you were going to send Norbert away on Saturday night? After listening to the two people's speeches, Aizen couldn't help showing a strange look. Malfoy found out that Hagrid was raising a dragon, but he also found out about Harry's plan to send Norbert away from the astronomy tower on Saturday. This, could it be that Malfoy is really the nemesis of the trio? Aizen remembered that when he was observing earlier, the picture he saw was the letter sent back by the trio through Charlie, and he knew their plan. But from the two people's rhetoric, it can be known that Malfoy actually went to the school hospital to mock Ron after class, and borrowed a book by the way, thus learning about their plan. Yes, what was even more outrageous was that the note that Charlie had written to them was in the book that Malfoy had borrowed. What a coincidence. As for why Ron lent Malfoy a book, Aizen guessed that it was nothing more than a compromise made by Malfoy who was afraid to report directly to Hagrid. It can only be said that the luck of Ron, Harry and Hermione was really bad to a certain extent. That's right, that's why we came here to ask Professor Aizen for help. Harry nodded helplessly. Okay, then, let me show you a demonstration. Watch it, Aizen nodded pointing his wand at a thick book on the table, shrink quickly. Afterwards, the book quickly shrank in the eyes of the three of them, directly turning into a toy the size of a fingernail. 
Amazing. Hermione had a look of anticipation on her face. By the way, in addition to the shrinking curse, you have to learn the enlargement curse, otherwise there is no way to restore it to its original size. Seeing that the two were eager to try, Aizen patted his forehead. I almost forgot the enlarging spell corresponding to the shrinking spell. Get bigger quickly. Afterwards, Aizen pointed his wand at the book that had shrunk and set a spell. The book, the size of a fingernail, quickly grew in size in front of several people and returned to its original size in the blink of an eye. Seeing that the two were about to start practicing directly, Aizen directly interrupted their movements. Just kidding, this is a library, how can it be a place to practice spells? Okay, there are still two days before you send Norbert away, so go back and practice hard. I think it shouldn't be a problem for you to practice these two spells in two days. After putting away his wand, Aizen winked at the two of them. Then, as if thinking of something, he took out the suitcase from the storage ring and placed it in front of the two of them. This is the suitcase I used before, and I also cast the No Trace Stretching Curse on it. Seeing the puzzled looks of the two, Aizen continued to explain, If, I mean if, you still can't use the Shrinking Curse smoothly. Shrunk down Noble. So you can try to stuff it in, I think. Its entrance is big enough for Noble to fit in. It's only two days. Noble won't grow too big, right? That's right, thank you, Professor Aizen. Harry was taken aback for a moment, then showed a surprised expression, and then thanked Aizen. Okay, let's go back quickly. By the way, after you have learned the Shrinking Curse and Enlargement Curse, you can also teach it to Ron, if he is willing to learn it. After finishing, Aizen waved to the two, but at the end at the moment, I also reminded them. After all, Ron also got the storage ring from Aizen, so it's no big deal to teach him these two spells. The two nodded, and then left the library with their suitcases. By the way, Professor Aizen, Harry returned quickly when he was leaving, and came to Aizen's side to talk quietly. This call let Aizen know that the trio had learned from Hagrid that in addition to being guarded by Liu Wei, the trio also knew that Professor Sprout, Professor Flittick, Professor McGonagall, Professor Quirrell, and Professor Snape had all cast protective magic. Okay, I see. After thinking for a while, Aizen understood what Harry meant and nodded slightly as he spoke. Obviously the trio would think that Snape was close to beating the whole level when they heard the news. Since Snape also participated in the action of applying protective magic to the Philosopher's Stone, he must know the methods of other professors. In this way, combined with Snape's previous threats to Quirrell, only Hagrid's pet Fluffy and Quirrell's secret tricks stand in his way. In other words, in the eyes of the trio, once Quirrell gave in and Snape found a way to deal with Liu Wei, then he would simply steal the Philosopher's Stone. So, maybe the purpose of Harry telling him this was just to be on the safe side? I have to say that their reasoning logic is quite rigorous and seems very reasonable. But in fact, the truth is not like this. However, Aizen couldn't tell the truth directly. On the one hand, how can he explain everything he knows when he says it? On the other hand, he actually wants to follow the plot so that he can come into contact with the Sorcerer's Stone. Besides, as a passerby professor, there is no need to be too flamboyant, right? Chapter 42 Harry's Alone Actions Since the most urgent thing before the trio was to send Norbert away, Hermione and Harry, who only had two days left to practice the spell, started the operation of chanting spells crazily. Fortunately, the Shrinking Curse and Enlargement Curse were not too advanced and difficult spells. Hermione was the first to successfully cast these two spells at noon on Friday. Immediately afterwards, Harry also successfully learned to use these two spells at one o'clock in the morning that night. However, at noon on Saturday, both of them tried at the Hagrid Hut. Although they could make Norbert smaller, due to the magic resistance of magical creatures and the lack of magic power of the two, Norbert only it can be changed to the size of a wash basin by them, but it still cannot be stuffed into the storage ring. To be honest, I have been using Yegua to read and read books recently, change sources, and read aloud with many timbers, Yegua Yudu Android and Apple are all available. Fortunately, Aizen finally lent them the suitcase with the No Trace Stretch Charm cast on it. After trying, Harry found that after using the shrinking charm to make Norbert smaller, he could smoothly stuff it into the suitcase. Such a result made Hermione and Harry, as well as Hagrid present, heave a sigh of relief. After all, comparatively speaking, it is indeed more convenient to pack Noble in a suitcase than they originally planned to pack in crates. However, since Noble can be packed into a suitcase, it is convenient to transport to the astronomy tower. Then their plan also made some changes appropriately. Originally, they planned to pack Noble in a crate and move it to the astronomy tower, so Hermione and Harry would need to lift the crate and slowly move it to the highest point. But now they can do it alone. So after discussing, Harry decided to wear the invisibility cloak and go to the astronomy tower alone with the suitcase containing Norbert. And Hermione, waiting for news in the Gryffindor common room. On Saturday, after completing the daily tasks of learning potions and ancient runes, Aizen spent some time practicing spells. After it was completely dark, Aizen took out the observation mirror in the faculty dormitory. That's right, he planned to see how Harry and the others sent Norbert away, and whether there would be any accidents. 
The night is relatively dark today, perhaps foreshadowing something, even the sky over Hogwarts Castle is covered with dark clouds. With Eisen's thought, the scene in the observation mirror changed, and he soon came to the Gryffindor common room. Time passed slowly, and after 10 o'clock in the evening, after the wizards in the Gryffindor common room returned to the dormitory one by one, two figures came to the fire and sat on the sofa. That's right, Hermione and Harry. The two sat opposite each other, and after a short conversation for a few minutes, Harry put on the invisibility cloak and disappeared from Eisen's sight together with the suitcase. Seeing this, Hermione pursed her lips, showing a worried look. Obviously, even if the plan is the best, no one knows if there will be any accidents. With a thought in Eisen, the scene in the observation mirror changed, and the scene has come to Hagrid's hut. But there are only scenes of Hagrid constantly teasing Norbert. Perhaps because he knew he was going to part with Norbert, the reluctance on Hagrid's face was very clear. However, what was rather strange was that Eisen had waited for half an hour, but still did not see Harry's figure appearing. Switching the camera back and forth between the Gryffindor common room and Hagrid's hut, nothing strange happened to Eisen either. Hermione was sitting on the sofa, flipping through the books, but her mind was a little absent-minded. And Hagrid keeps teasing Norbert. Isn't it? The plan is such an accident? Eisen couldn't help but muttered, and then stood up and moved his body. At this rate, Eisen felt that he might fall asleep from boredom. Time passed slowly, and fifteen minutes later, just as Eisen was about to give up observing, he suddenly saw movement in Hagrid's hut. The door of the hut opened and closed quickly, and then a figure suddenly appeared, holding a suitcase in his hand. That's right, Harry finally made it to Hagrid's cabin with his suitcase. Since the time had dragged on for long enough, Harry, who was afraid that something might happen, didn't talk to Hagrid for too long, and asked him to help put Norbert into the suitcase. Afterwards, Harry covered the suitcase and himself with an invisibility cloak and left in a hurry. Eisen, who watched all this, felt a little miscalculated. Because Harry's plan to act alone was covered with an invisibility cloak almost from beginning to end, so he had no way of observing whether any accidents would happen to Harry. Simply, Eisen knew that his destination was the tallest tower in Hogwarts, so he directly set his perspective on the highest point of the astronomy tower. When a figure appeared on the top of the astronomy tower, trembling in the night sky, Eisen checked the time, and it was almost midnight. Perhaps, God couldn't stand it anymore, and felt that it was a little pitiful for Harry to blow alone under the night sky. So within a few minutes, four figures suddenly fell from the sky. That's right, Charlie's friends landed in front of Harry on broomsticks. Since Charlie had already told his friends the ins and outs of the incident, the figures didn't hesitate after falling down, and directly used the rope to tie up Norbert who Harry had released from the suitcase. Afterwards, several figures soared into the air on broomsticks, and Norbert was chained among them, and they left together. Seeing that Harry's actions went very smoothly, Eisen couldn't help but nod it. Things seemed to be coming to an end here. However, I don't know if it was due to the inertia of the plot, but then Eisen saw a stunned scene. Harry turned and left briskly, walking down the spiral staircase. It can be seen that being able to get rid of Norbert's burden made Harry feel very happy. But, you don't want your invisibility cloak anymore? Right on top of the tower. Seeing such a scene, Eisen wanted to say something, but didn't know how to say it. I'm going. If you are so careless, something will happen. There was no accident when I went, but I didn't expect that there would be an accident when I came back. Thinking of this, Eisen couldn't help but shook his head. Sure enough, since Harry wasn't invisible, Eisen's eyes followed him all the time. Just as soon as he stepped into the corridor, he ran into a gloomy filch. The moment Harry saw filch, Eisen zoomed in and clearly saw how Harry's face changed. From the ease and joy at the beginning, to panic, and then to frustration and helplessness. Such a dramatic scene directly made Eisen laugh. Then, under the leadership of filch, Harry obediently followed to Professor McGonagall's office on the second floor. After entering, Harry found that the office was empty. So, Harry sat down and began to find some excuses and reasons for his behavior. The whole office was quiet, and even the atmosphere turned bad. Before Harry could find a good reason, the door of the office was opened from the outside. Following Harry's movement of raising his head, Eisen saw Professor McGonagall walking in, followed by a figure behind her, which turned out to be the little wizard Neville. Tsk tsk, don't think about it now, Harry and Neville will definitely be deducted points and put into confinement. Seeing this scene, Eisen already had a premonition of everything. It seems that the plot in the original book also developed in this way, but Hermione was taken out of this operation because of the help provided by Eisen. With a thought, Eisen turned his gaze back to Hermione and found her still sitting quietly in the Gryffindor common room with a worried look on her face. Turning his gaze back to Professor McGonagall's office again, he saw that she was reprimanding Harry and Neville. Although Eisen has no way of knowing how she lectured, but basically he can guess it. Shaking his head, Eisen put away the observation mirror directly, not going to look any further. As far as Harry acting alone this time, in Eisen's opinion, more than half of the mission should be completed. 
At least, he managed to send Norbert away. Chapter 43 Hermione's Complaint Early the next morning, when Eisen was still having breakfast in the auditorium, he was surrounded by a petite figure. I can't imagine, Professor Eisen, you don't even know how stupid Harry is. Hermione's scream echoed in Eisen's ears. At a glance, Hermione looked sulky, and even her fluffy and thick brown hair was trembling, obviously sulking. Oh, what happened? Eisen handed over a piece of bread. Although a flash of understanding flashed in his eyes, he expressed concern quietly. Yes, it's just, it's too much. Harry was discovered by Professor McGonagall, and Neville was deducted a total of 100 points, and they will be locked up. Hermione took the bread from Eisen, still vice indignant gesture. What's going on? Something went wrong with the plan? Eisen lowered his voice and asked in a low voice. Yes, Professor Eisen? Hermione sighed, and then told what happened last night. After Hermione explained clearly, it was discovered that Harry had sat on the other side of Eisen at some point. Then he gave Harry a hard look. Neville saw that Malfoy reported to Professor McGonagall that Harry had a dragon, so he came out to find Harry and remind him, but he was also caught by Professor McGonagall? Eisen glanced at the dejected Harry next to him, briefly repeated what happened. That's right, because Harry forgot to wear the invisibility cloak, Gryffindor was deducted 100 points. Mentioning the 100 points deducted, Hermione's eyebrows felt so heartbroken that it was hard to breathe. While talking, he was still frowning, as if he was calculating how many questions the teacher had to answer to earn points back. In other words, Gryffindor suddenly became the bottom one? Eisen silently calculated, but there was a gloating expression on his face. Yes, they destroyed all Gryffindor's hopes of winning the House Cup in one night, Hermione said, looking at Harry through gritted teeth, as if she was about to take a beating before she could breathe. However, after seeing the schadenfreude on Eisen's face, Hermione showed an angry look on her little face. Professor Eisen, you? Okay, okay. Seeing this, Eisen quickly restrained his gloating expression, and then asked solemnly, So, what about Neville? Why don't you see him coming over for dinner? Neville cried for a long time last night, and is still sleeping. Harry pursed his lips and told what he saw. How is this going? I think there must be something wrong with the hourglass recording the Academy Cup score. Yeah. Why is it suddenly 100% less than yesterday? There were whispers coming from not far from the dining table, which made Hermione even more annoyed, and Harry couldn't wait to put his head on the dinner plate. Seeing this scene, Eisen can basically predict what will happen next. That's right, Harry Potter, the hero of two Quidditch matches, would soon be Gryffindor's sinner. I am afraid that this originally most popular savior is about to become a lost cause. Hi, thank you Potter, you've done us a great favor. Several Slytherin wizards deliberately walked past Harry, thanked Harry strangely, and then left with a smile. It seemed that, because of Malfoy, Slytherin already knew what was going on. It's okay. After a few weeks, no one will care about it. Eisen had to comfort Harry aloud. And, you see, Fred and George have been playing pranks at school and lost not a lot of points, but everyone loves him. But they never lose 100 points all at once, do they? Harry's mood didn't improve, but he replied sadly. Uh, well, that's not it. Eisen paused and could only shrug his shoulders. Harry, let me tell you, from now on, don't wander around anymore, and don't meddle in other people's business. Although Harry was in a bad mood, it didn't prevent Hermione from preaching to Harry. Harry knew what Hermione was talking about, it was nothing more than not spying on Snape. However, considering the serious consequences this time, Harry felt that Hermione was right. The book chasing app recommended to me by an old book friend who has known me for 10 years, yet we're reading. It's really easy to use. I rely on reading and listening to books to pass the time while driving and before going to bed. You can download Yegwoyudu here. I think I should quit the Quidditch team. Perhaps ashamed, Harry agreed with Hermione's suggestion and came up with an idea. No, I don't think so. If you quit the Quidditch team, how can you earn back points? Eisen, who was originally agreeing with Harry's idea, nodded after hearing Hermione's words. Support. Okay, Hermione and Harry, since the loss has already been done, it's too late to regret. However, I believe you will earn your points back, come on. Seeing that the two were in a bad mood, Eisen encouraged them encouragement. Actually, let's be honest, it's not that long until the end of the semester. Eisen knows that if they want to earn points back, it is basically impossible to win this year's Academy Cup. But no way, who let them have Dumbledore behind them? After Harry beat Voldemort all the way to get the Philosopher's Stone, the score might be added back by Dumbledore. In the following days, Eisen continued his alchemy research and magic spell practice, but the life of the little wizards of Gryffindor was not very good. Fortunately, Hermione said that although she wasn't the main culprit who caused Gryffindor to lose points, because she was in a small group with Harry, she also inadvertently received a kind of rejection. But this was nothing to Hermione. She answered fewer questions in class, and instead began to study silently with her head down. 
As for Neville, although it was also very painful, but because he was not as famous as Harry, he had no sense of existence in the eyes of many people. Therefore, it has not been blamed too much. And Ron, since the injury on his hand was healed, has been studying hard with Harry, reviewing until late at night every day. They have to memorize those complicated potion formulas every night. Remember those spells and spells and so on. Although it was very hard work, compared to being pointed and blamed by others, Harry felt surprisingly fulfilled. Even, Harry was starting to cheer up about the approaching final exams. Because, although Harry had no idea of quitting the Quidditch team, he was rejected during training. The other players stopped talking to him during practice, and if they had to mention it, they just used Seeker instead of his name. Therefore, Harry, who felt extremely difficult, even felt that the exam came a little too soon. However, just a week before the final exam, Harry's idea of not minding his own business was shaken. It was afternoon and Harry was coming out of the library. Just as he was about to leave, there was the sound of crying in the front classroom. The adventurous spirit in Harry's bones burst out, and he couldn't help approaching that classroom. No, no, can't do it anymore, please, Harry recognized Quirrell's voice, and it sounded like someone was threatening him. Okay, okay, Quirrell sobbed in agreement, then hurried out of the classroom. Harry noticed that Quirrell was straightening his scarf as he strode away. After Quirrell walked away, when Harry wanted to sneak into that classroom, he suddenly found another door opened a gap and a figure left with brisk steps. He was right, it was Professor Snape. Judging from Snape's brisk footsteps, he probably got the answer he wanted from Quirrell. Chapter 44 Harry's Discovery Although he had already made a decision not to meddle in other people's business, and had made a pledge in front of Hermione and Eisen, but after encountering this kind of thing suddenly and feeling that he had discovered something extraordinary, Harry still couldn't hold back. So, Harry, who had just left the library, returned to the library again. At this time, Hermione and Ron were testing astronomy-related knowledge, and they were still surprised when Harry returned. Then Harry told him everything he had heard. So, Snape finally got it? Ron couldn't help but exclaim. If he got from Quirrell how to remove a magical protection spell that was cast, wouldn't it be? But don't forget, Lu Wei is still watching. Hermione interrupted what he was going to say next. Are you sure that Snape didn't get a solution to Lu Wei? Ron said, pointing to the books around the library. I'm sure there must be a book hidden around here that tells how to subdue a three big dog with a head. So what do we do? A thirst for adventure shone in Harry's eyes. What? Stop meddling in your own business? How can it be called meddling when justice prevents evil? However, before Harry could speak, he was directly interrupted by Hermione. Go to Professor Dumbledore. We should have done this a long time ago. If we act alone again, not to mention being deducted 100 points, we will definitely be expelled directly. Hermione's words poured cold water on Harry's head. But, we have no evidence. Harry said after a long silence. Quirrell was terrified at the time. He was threatened by Snape, and he would never come out to testify for us. Snape just said in front of Dumbledore that he didn't know about Halloween how did the giant monster come in on the eve. There is no way to expose him. Everyone knows we don't get along with Snape, so Professor Dumbledore will think it's a set of lies we made up to get Snape fired. Moreover, how do we know the Sorcerer's Stone and Lu Wei? It is too troublesome to explain. Hermione was instantly convinced. No way, they really knew too much, and if they wanted to explain it to Dumbledore, they had to tell everything they knew. But how did they know about the Philosopher's Stone and Lu Wei? But it's hard to explain. We can tell Aizen. Ron's eyes lit up suddenly, offering his opinion. However, Aizen had already told Dumbledore last time that Dumbledore trusted Snape completely. Harry shook his head. Then, how about we tell Aizen about this, let him not talk to Dumbledore, but just watch Snape in the dark? At this moment, Hermione suddenly thought of a way. Great, that's a great idea. Harry and Ron agreed with Hermione's proposal. Okay then, you review this first, I'll go to Aizen's office. Hermione said, put a Jupiter astronomy map in front of the two, turned and left the library. In the office, Aizen is practicing transfiguration. A piece of poker danced up and down in the hand, changing from time to time, turning into a bird for a while, a cheetah for a while, and then a blade, vines, chains, whips and so on. Bang bang. Just as Aizen was concentrating, there was a knock on the door. Come in. Aizen stopped what he was doing, turned the poker back to its original state, and opened the door to the office. Professor Aizen. Hermione walked straight in, with a cute look, and anyone who saw her would praise her. Hermione, what's the matter? Seeing that it was Hermione who came, Aizen felt a little strange. Then, he threw the poker in his hand and turned it into a chair, signaling the other party to sit down and talk. It stands to reason that the exam is about to take place, and Hermione, as a good student, should be busy with her revision. Yes, Professor Aizen, it's like this, Hermione looked a little embarrassed, but told what Harry had discovered. Harry found out that Snape learned from Quirrell how to decipher the magical protection that was applied. But aren't you meddling in your own business? 
After listening, Aizen nodded knowingly, but then asked a question, his eyes became weird. This, this, so we decided to tell you and ask you to help keep an eye on Snape. Hermione stuttered suddenly after being caught in Aizen's weird eyes, but she still managed to say what she had come for. So that's how it is. Aizen showed a sudden look, yes, for Hermione and the others, letting the professor himself stare at Snape is indeed a good solution. If Snape really wanted to make a move, he could not only stop it, but ask Dumbledore directly for help. Okay, I'll keep an eye on Snape, but if Harry finds anything else, he must let me know, understand? After pondering for a moment, Aizen nodded in agreement. Of course, he still needs to keep an eye on Harry's progress, so he told Hermione to tell himself when Harry finds anything. In this way, he can better cut in and participate in it openly. In this way, we can gain the opportunity to contact the Philosopher's Stone. Okay, thank you Professor Aizen then, I'll go first, goodbye. After hearing Aizen's answer, Hermione almost jumped out of her chair. Still, she was happy to thank Aizen. After Hermione left, a smile finally appeared on Aizen's face. That's right. Aizen has been waiting for almost a year for this moment. Ever since Aizen accidentally refined the observation mirror and discovered the extraordinary characteristics of the perfect level, he suspected that the extraordinary characteristics of the Philosopher's Stone would be of a high level. Therefore, Aizen absolutely cannot give up this opportunity. After all, this Philosopher's Stone was refined by Nicole Flamel, and it may be the only Philosopher's Stone in the world. Recommended, Yegwa reading and chasing books is really easy to use. Download Yegwa Yurdu here, everyone can try it soon. At the most critical point, Nicole Flamel didn't want to live anymore. So he handed the Philosopher's Stone to Dumbledore and asked him to complete a series of arrangements. And afterwards, the Philosopher's Stone was to be destroyed. In other words, unless Aizen can refine the Philosopher's Stone himself in the future, there will be no chance again. So, can he refine the Philosopher's Stone? To be honest, Aizen didn't know. It stands to reason that with Goldfinger in his body, Aizen will be able to refine the Sorcerer's Stone sooner or later. But the problem is that his gold finger is all about strengthening his strength and has no effect on alchemy. Therefore, he was really not confident that he could refine the Philosopher's Stone. After all, in the entire wizarding world for thousands of years, only Nicole Flamel has the record of refining the Philosopher's Stone. This shows how difficult it is to refine the Sorcerer's Stone. It's a pity. If Goldfinger can show the skills, then the alchemy skills will have to improve, and the Sorcerer's Stone can be refined to 10 or 8. Thinking of this possibility, Aizen couldn't help but sighed and shook his head. Such a look of lack of human heart and snake-swallowing elephants makes people want to punch him when they see it. Chapter 45 Harry in Confinement After Hermione left Aizen's office and returned to the library, she told Harry and Ron that Aizen had agreed to help keep an eye on Snape. The two breathed a sigh of relief after hearing the result. After all, it saves them from wandering around. However, Aizen said that if Harry discovers something, he must be notified in time. Hermione explained Aizen's request. Of course, if there is anything, I can only talk to Aizen at the moment. Harry said that there is no problem with this. Yes, telling Professor Aizen is the best way now. The matter was settled, and a smile appeared on Ron's face. However, early the next morning, before the trio had time to be happy, they received bad news. Harry and Neville had received notes at the breakfast table, and they were identical. It read, Your lockup begins tonight at 11 o'clock. Meet Mr. Filch in the foyer. Harry almost forgot that after losing points, he would be locked up. Well now, Harry and Neville had become brothers and sisters, and they were going to be sent to solitary confinement at 11 o'clock at night. Harry expected Hermione to complain again, saying that he would be fired sooner or later, but she didn't say anything. Yes, she thought Harry and Neville deserved to be in detention. It's okay. I heard from Fred that the confinement is just doing some work, such as cleaning the trophies in the showroom. It's very simple. Ron on the side comforted him. But obviously, such reassurance didn't work very well for Harry. After all, he and Neville were deducted a full 100 points at once. On the other hand, Aizen went out while he was free and sent the script he had written to his father. Aizen bumped into Hermione in the library on his return at noon. Hermione, how is your review going? How effective is the sea of questions I mentioned? Seeing Hermione struggling to review, Aizen stepped forward and asked, Professor Aizen, the method you said is great and it's much easier for me to revise now. Hearing Aizen's voice, Hermione immediately showed a confident smile and there was undisguised admiration in her eyes. Ahem, by the way, what about Harry and Ron? Why don't you see them reviewing with you? Seeing Hermione like this, Aizen felt a little guilty even though he thought he had a thick skin like a city wall. After all, this tactic was not his own creation. Therefore, he directly changed the subject. Harry is going to be locked up at 11 o'clock in the evening, and Ron is still comforting Harry. Speaking of Harry, Hermione suddenly became sad, because she remembered the fact that Gryffindor had been deducted a hundred points which was really too bad. 
In other words, currently the best app for reading and listening to books, Yegwa Reading, Yegwa Udu install the latest version. Don't worry, Hermione. I believe a miracle will happen. Aizen, who knew all the truth, had a mysterious look on his face. Yes, Aizen knew that Dumbledore would give Gryffindor points at the final dinner. But he couldn't tell Hermione directly now. So, when Hermione showed a puzzled expression and was about to ask, Aizen refused to say any more. At 11 o'clock that night, Harry and Neville said goodbye to Ron and Hermione in the Gryffindor common room and went down to the entrance hall together. When they arrived, they found that Filch had already been waiting there in advance. And, to Harry's surprise, Malfoy was here too. At this time, Harry remembered that Malfoy was also going to be locked up. Follow me. Seeing that Harry and Neville had arrived, Filch lit a lamp to signal them to follow him. Filch was a squib, and perhaps because of that, he had a very bad attitude towards young wizards. While walking, he glanced at Harry and the others from the corner of his eye. Oh, I think you should think twice when you want to violate school rules in the future. Right. It's a pity that Hogwarts abolished the old-fashioned punishment of the past, hanging you by the wrists and hanging you from the ceiling for days. I still have those chains in my office. Maybe heaven will come in handy. Well, let's go. Don't try to escape if you do. You will be punished more severely. Filch chattered on and on, as if trying to scare Harry and the others, but let alone. In this dark night, it was quite scary. Across the dark field, Harry and Neville's moods kept rising and falling. They didn't know what kind of punishment they were about to receive, but judging from Filch's cheerful tone, their punishment should not be too light. When he came to Hagrid's hut, Harry noticed that there was a light outside the window, and it seemed that Hagrid hadn't slept yet. Filch, is that you? Come on, I'm leaving. Hagrid's voice came suddenly, so clear in the quiet night. For a moment, Harry's mood brightened. In his opinion, things shouldn't be too bad if he's going to act with Hagrid. Perhaps knowing what Harry was thinking in his heart, Filch spoke directly at this moment. You probably thought you'd have a good time with that idiot? Tell you, boy, you're going to the Forbidden Forest. If you're safe and sound come out, then count my guess wrong. The Forbidden Forest, before Harry could react, Malfoy behind him stopped involuntarily, with a look of shock on his face. We can't go in in the middle of the night, it's very dangerous in there. I heard that there are werewolves. The quiet night seemed even more terrifying. Neville next to him couldn't help but choked up and grabbed Harry's sleeve firmly. Then you're to blame yourself, aren't you? Filch's tone was suddenly jubilant, obviously very pleased. You should have thought of those werewolves before you got into trouble, shouldn't you? It's almost time. I've been waiting for half an hour. What's up? Harry? Neville? Before the atmosphere turned in a terrifying direction, Hagrid suddenly emerged from the darkness. Look at Hagrid's attire. He is carrying a huge crossbow and a quiver full of arrows on his shoulder. Following behind Hage is his pet Yaya. Yaya is a Neapolitan Mastiff. It looks very fierce on the surface and is particularly intimidating. But in fact, Yaya's character is very docile. So, Hagrid's purpose of bringing Fong Fong is probably to boost his courage. You shouldn't be so polite to them. After all, they are here to accept punishment, Hagrid. Seeing Hagrid's polite attitude, Filch suddenly pulled his face. So, you've been late for so long because you've been lecturing them, huh? This isn't your place to lecture people. Your mission is done, and they're in my charge from now on. Hagrid frowned not hiding in own position. I'll come and pick up their wreckage at dawn, Filch said harshly, then turned and walked towards the castle. When he came to the edge of the Forbidden Forest, Malfoy finally couldn't help screaming. I don't want to enter that Forbidden Forest, it's too dangerous inside. After hearing the panic in Malfoy's tone, Harry actually felt a tinge of joy at this moment. You have to pay for what you did wrong. Hagrid was not used to Malfoy, so he reprimanded him mercilessly. But the people who come here to do things are servants, Students don't know how to do this. I thought it was just writing inspections. The frightened look on Malfoy's face became more and more obvious under the moonlight. Write an inspection? What use is that to you? You have to do something useful, or you'll be out. Hagrid curled his lips, showing a disdainful expression. If my father knew what I was doing, he would, yeah, he'd tell you that's what Hogwarts does. And if he wanted you to be expelled, you could go back to the castle right now. Pack your bags. Malfoy thought that his father was the Hogwarts trustee, so he could threaten Hagrid but he didn't expect that Hagrid didn't give Lucius any face at all and directly reprimanded him roughly. Chapter 46, The Eve When Harry and others followed Hagrid into the Forbidden Forest, Eisen had already seen all this through the observation mirror. At noon, when Hermione told him that Harry had been punished for detention, Eisen had already expected what would happen that night. In fact, Eisen also thought about whether to secretly follow Lynn for a trip, to experience the feeling of traveling in the Forbidden Forest at night, and to fight against Quirrell who has been possessed by Voldemort. But after careful consideration, Aizen dismissed the idea. On the one hand, Aizen felt that his goal was the Sorcerer's Stone, 
so there was no need for extra complications. If someone found out, he would have no way of explaining his abnormal behavior of not sleeping in the middle of the night and sneaking into the forbidden forest. On the other hand, if Eisen met Quirrell and fought against him, he didn't know what would happen afterwards, but there was no way to guarantee whether Voldemort would steal the Philosopher's Stone as planned. After all, if Eisen killed Quirrell directly, the plot would be completely messed up. Even if he didn't kill Quirrell, there was no guarantee that he wouldn't change his plan after being discovered by Voldemort. Therefore, no matter what the situation is, it is unacceptable for Eisen, who has not yet obtained the Philosopher's Stone. However, when seeing Harry and the others in the observation mirror, Eisen couldn't help sighing again. Although he can teleport anytime and anywhere within a five-mile range with the observation mirror and apparition, he can't do it in Hogwarts school. If it's where the anti-apparition charm isn't applied, then Eisen's two abilities work perfectly together. Unfortunately, he doesn't have permission to apparate at Hogwarts. So, if it's a portkey, will it have the property of teleportation? Eisen's eyes lit up, and then he muttered, It's still very possible, I have to write this down. After keeping this kind of thing in mind, Eisen turned his attention to the observation mirror again. At this moment, Harry and Hagrid appeared in the mirror, while Malfoy, Neville and Hagrid's pet Fong were no longer around. Obviously, they have been grouped. Hagrid and Harry stared at the ground as they walked along the path deep into the forbidden forest. The moonlight shone on his face, and it could be seen that he was still quite anxious. A few minutes later, Eisen saw Hagrid and Harry encounter a centaur in a clearing. Judging from the way Hagrid stepped forward to shake hands with the other party, he knew the other party. Eisen knew that this should be the centaur Ronan. However, Harry on the side was stunned, because he had never seen such a creature. Above the waist is a human, with red hair and beard, but below the waist is a reddish-brown horse. After talking to Ronan for a few words, Hagrid pointed to Harry, as if to introduce each other. However, while talking, Ronan looked up at the starry sky, not knowing what to see in the dark night. Eisen turned his gaze away, and found that there was nothing to be seen except the bright moon and the bright stars. However, after thinking that the centaur has the talent of divination by observing images, he is relieved. Maybe, Ronan really can see what Eisen can't. Hagrid continued talking to Ronan, but soon became impatient. However, before he could make any other moves, he was startled by the second centaur who sprang out of the jungle. He opened his bow and set his arrow, and when he was about to aim, he discovered the identity of the other party. Then Hagrid greeted the other party again. Apparently, Hagrid was an old acquaintance to many of the creatures in the Forbidden Forest. However, after a grumpy word, Hagrid just dragged Harry away. They were walking in the dense forest, as if a lion would rush out of the darkness at any moment. When turning a small bend, Harry suddenly grabbed Hagrid's sleeve and pointed in one direction. Eisen's eyes turned with his thoughts, and he found red sparks flickering suddenly in the direction Harry was pointing. Afterwards, Hagrid looked anxious and hurried away after saying a word, while Harry was left where he was. However, it didn't take long for Hagrid to come back with Malfoy, Neville and Fong. I saw that Hagrid reprimanded Malfoy angrily and then left directly with Neville. As for Harry and Malfoy, they were directly grouped together by Hagrid. Walking forward, maybe it was because the forbidden forest at night was too scary, so Harry and Malfoy stayed together without arguing. When passing by a clearing, Harry showed a surprised expression and pointed to the bushes at the edge of the clearing. Looking away, Eisen noticed that a white corpse was shining. It was a dead unicorn. To be honest, Eisen had seen goblins and phoenixes in the wizarding world earlier. They were obviously beautiful names, but they were so ugly that Eisen couldn't look directly at them. After seeing the appearance of the unicorn this time, it was the first time that Eisen felt that this magical animal was indeed very beautiful. But unfortunately, the unicorn in front of him is dead. And he also knew that the unicorn was killed by Coral, who was possessed by Voldemort. Naturally, Voldemort's purpose was to prolong his life by drinking the unicorn's blood, so that he would have enough time to steal the Philosopher's Stone. In that way, not only can he be resurrected successfully, but he can also get powerful power. Before Harry could do anything, a hooded figure emerged from the darkness, crawled to the unicorn's body, and began to drink its blood. Would something really happen? Looking at this scene, Eisen knew what was going on. But will Harry really be as safe as in the original plot? Eisen wondered if he would trigger the butterfly effect. But what happened next made Eisen relieved. After Malfoy and Fong ran away, when Harry faced the imminent danger alone, he was suddenly rescued by the centaur Forenza. In other words, currently the best app for reading and listening to books, Yegwa Reading, Yegwa You Do install the latest version. By the way, Forenza also had Harry ride him, sending him to Hagrid's side. Seeing this, Eisen immediately put away the observation mirror. That's right, Harry should have known from Forenza that it was Voldemort's idea to hit the Philosopher's Stone. Then the next plot can basically be on the right track. If nothing else, Eisen felt that Harry would tell Hermione and Ron what happened to him when he returned. That way, if they could think of him, he would have access to the Philosopher's Stone. 
Sure enough, early the next morning, the trio took advantage of breakfast to tell Aizen what happened to Harry last night. So, you think Snape didn't steal the sorcerer's stone for the sake of getting rich, but for the sake of mysterious people? After Harry finished speaking in a low voice, Aizen asked back what he meant. That's right, only Voldemort would do that. He doesn't care if he gets cursed by drinking the unicorn's blood, because as long as he gets the philosopher's stone, he can be fully restored. Harry's eyes sparkled, even excited all stood up. The centaur said that the you-know, who will enter Hogwarts and kill you? Ron had a look of panic on his face, and unconsciously lowered his voice when he looked at Harry. However, everyone knows that the only person the you-know, who has always been afraid of is Dumbledore. With Dumbledore here, the you-know, who would not dare to come in. Besides, whoever says what the centaurs say must be right. Hermione analyzed calmly. After one pass, it was concluded that Hogwarts was safe with Dumbledore in it. As for what Harry said, about the centaur's prophecy that Voldemort would kill Harry, in Hermione's view, that was magic that even Professor McGonagall found unreliable. Of course, Eisen agreed with Hermione about the centaur's prophecy. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on Snape, he has no chance to steal the Philosopher's Stone. At this time, Eisen gave a relieved answer to the trio. Although Harry was still very worried, his mood had calmed down a little. In fact, Eisen was fine if he didn't stare at Snape. Because it wasn't Snape who was going to steal the Philosopher's Stone. Chapter 47 Final Exam As the final exam approached, the trio became more and more busy. Unlike Harry who was worried all day, Hermione and Ron didn't worry about the Philosopher's Stone at all. After all, Hermione and Ron hadn't had the horrible things that happened to Harry in the Forbidden Forest. Also, they didn't have the same burning pain as the scar on Harry's head. Even when he was sleeping at night, Harry would still be awakened by the previous nightmare. However, as time passed, when Harry passed the corridor on the fourth floor every day, he would find that Lu Wei was still lying behind that door, alive and well. Clearly, things weren't getting out of hand. Of course, Aizen was also secretly observing all of this. In order to cope with what is about to happen next, Aizen even shortened the time for studying alchemy a lot. Every day when not practicing the spell, Aizen keeps an eye on Coral through the viewing glass. Yes, although he still had occasional glances at Hermione and Harry and the like, and what Snape was doing, the main target was Coral. Since the observation mirror made by Aizen indirectly observes the characters by observing the terrain environment, he is not afraid of being discovered by Voldemort who is possessed by Coral. Soon, the time came to the first week of June, and students began to get busy with final exams. For Hermione, all the exam subjects are a sure thing. Whether it is a practical test or a question and answer test, there is no problem at all. In answering the exam, in order to prevent the students from cheating, the teacher will give them some anti-cheating quills specially used for the exam. Obviously, these quills with the anti-cheating spell can prevent students from cheating to a large extent. For practical exams and charm subjects, Professor Flittick will pull the little wizards over one by one, let them chant spells to cast spells on Pineapple, and let Pineapple walk across the table with a tap dance. For the transfiguration exam, Professor McGonagall asked them to turn a mouse into an exquisite snuff bottle. The exquisiteness of the snuff bottle is directly linked to the score. Of course, whether it was Harry or Ron, the worst thing for them was the potions exam, because Snape would stand behind them and stare, just waiting for them to make a mistake. Of course, Aizen also contributed his own strength to the difficulties of the exams for young wizards. However, the astronomy class exam is very simple. It only requires a simple drawing of the star chart of the solar system. In Aizen's view, this is basically no problem for young wizards who have been in school for a year. After all, including several major planets in the solar system, the names of the satellites of all the planets do not have much content. The last subject of the exam is history of magic. The one-hour exam time is not only not torture but a relief for many young wizards. Because after an hour, they can play happily for a week. Following the ghost of Cuthbert Binns, the little wizards couldn't help cheering when they put down the quills and rolled up the answering parchment. For them, it's free to play until next week's exam results. The test content is much easier than I thought. When the little wizards came to the sunny place outside, Hermione couldn't help but still chattered to Harry and Ron. I don't need to memorize the elves. History of the Rebellion and the Werewolf Code of Conduct in 1673. I thought Ron and Harry would show impatient expressions again, but they didn't expect their attitudes to change drastically this time. Yes, I think Professor Eisen's question C tactics are really good, and I feel a lot easier during the exam. Harry rubbed the scar on his forehead, agreeing with Hermione's point of view, but feeling an inexplicable sense of foreboding. Even the practical test is still so bad, but it doesn't matter, we won't know how bad the test is until next week, there is no need to worry about it now. Ron nodded, and when he saw Harry's movements, he even took a picture pat him on the shoulder. Hiss. Harry clutched his forehead and gasped suddenly. Before Hermione and Ron's expressions changed, Harry shouted angrily, I really want to know what this means. My scar has been hurting, it used to hurt, 
but I don't think it's like this now frequent attacks. Why don't you go and see Madame Pomfrey, Harry? Seeing Harry's angry look, Ron directly suggested. But I'm not sick. Harry didn't think he was sick. I think this should be a sign that danger is coming. Harry, take it easy, Ron said and yawned. There was no way. It was too hot in June. Not only Ron, but even the other little wizards couldn't cheer up. Hermione was right. At Hogwarts, as long as Dumbledore was around, no one could have thought of the Sorcerer's Stone. In any case, we found no evidence that Snape had found a way to subdue Fluffy. The last time he I almost got my leg bitten off, and I won't be in a hurry to take another risk. Afterwards, Ron continued to comfort Harry. Nodding his head, Harry agreed with Ron's point of view. However, for some reason, Harry still felt an inexplicable unease. Later, he told the two of his uneasiness. That must be your delusion. You must be worried about the exam. Yesterday you were asleep and talked about the exam. But the exam is over. Ron said with a smile on his face. Obviously, he thought Harry was under too much pressure. However, Harry himself was sure that his uneasiness had nothing to do with the exam. So what is going on? When Harry saw an owl flying in the sky towards Hogwarts Castle with a note in its beak, Harry remembered that Hagrid had written him a letter. Hagrid. In an instant, Harry's face turned pale, as if he had thought of the problem. Even the two little friends beside him didn't care about it, they just jumped up and ran towards Hagrid's hut. What is he going to do? Hermione and Ron looked at each other, and then hurriedly followed without having time to ask further questions. When Harry came near Hagrid's hut, to his surprise, he found Hagrid sitting on a chair outside the hut, peeling pea pods. In other words, currently the best app for reading and listening to books, Yegwa Reading, Yegwa You Do install the latest version. Harry, the exam is over? Hagrid smiled and greeted Harry, who was still panting in a hurry. Would you like a cup of tea? Okay, thank you. Ron, who came after Harry, was not polite to Hagrid at all. However, before he could continue, he was interrupted by Harry. No, Hagrid, we are in a hurry. I have something to ask you. Do you remember the night you won Norbert at poker? The stranger, what do people look like? Harry said, his tone full of urgency, as if he wanted to confirm something. I don't know. He won't take off his cloak. But Hagrid gave a disappointing answer. After seeing the astonishment on the faces of several people, Hagrid raised his eyebrows. It's nothing, it's so strange. There will always be some strange guy patronizing the pig's head bar, and that person may be a dragon vendor. Then, did he mention Hogwarts to you? Harry's heartbeat suddenly quickened. I don't know. Maybe I mentioned it. He kept buying me drinks. Let me think. Obviously, Hagrid was almost drunk by the other party at the time. He asked me what I did and I said I was a gamekeeper here, and he asked what animals I was watching and I told him. I also said I wanted a dragon, and then he said that I have a dragon egg in my hand. If I want it, I have to play cards with him. But he said that I must find out my strength, otherwise after the dragon egg hatches, it will run around and cause trouble. I said, I even Lu Wei managed it well, a dragon is nothing at all. Hagrid recalled everything that happened back then with difficulty. Then is he very interested in Lu Wei? Harry, whose heart was beating fast, seemed to think of something, and the color on his face was gone. That's right, I was very interested. So I told him, a big dog with three heads, how can it be so easy to meet? But in fact, Lu Wei is easy to deal with, as long as you know how to calm it down, put some music on it, and it'll fall asleep. Hagrid's recollection came to a screeching halt, and then the look of horror appeared on his face. I shouldn't have told you these things. Hey, where are you going? Before Hagrid could finish his words, the three of them galloped away like wild horses. Chapter 48 The Panic Trio Running all the way, Harry, Hermione, and Ron didn't speak, and they didn't stop until they entered the hall. Suddenly entering the hall from the outside, the change of vision made them feel that the hall was extremely dark. We have to tell Dumbledore about this. Harry looked very ugly. Hagrid told another strange wizard how to subdue Fluffy. I'm sure the wizard in the cloak is either Snape or Voldemort. It's too dangerous. Hope Dumbledore can trust us. But, where is Dumbledore's office? Hermione and Ron looked at each other, and then asked a question. Yes, as first-year little wizards, they didn't even know where the principal's office was. Professor Eisen. We can tell Eisen. He must know where Dumbledore's office is. Panicked, Harry remembered that Eisen could be of great help. What are you doing here? A voice suddenly came from across the hall, interrupting Harry's plans. They all knew the person who came. It was Professor McGonagall and she was still holding a large stack of books in her arms. We want to see Professor Dumbledore. Maybe it was because of being placed in confinement by Professor McGonagall, Harry didn't speak for a while. Afterwards, it was Hermione who mustered up the courage to explain her purpose. Want to see Professor Dumbledore? Why? Professor McGonagall glanced suspiciously at the three of them, making them very uncomfortable. Even, Harry swallowed his saliva. To be honest, I have been using Yegua to read and read books recently, change sources, and read aloud with many timbers, Yegwa Yudu Android and Apple are all available. 
How to say? This, this is a secret. Harry couldn't help but want to slap himself as soon as he finished speaking, because after he finished saying this, he saw Professor McGonagall's expression suddenly changed. Professor Dumbledore left ten minutes ago. The owl sent an urgent letter from the Ministry of Magic. He has already flown to London immediately, Professor McGonagall said in a cold tone, but the content of his answer surprised the three of them. He's gone? At this critical moment? A wave of despair enveloped Harry's heart. Dumbledore was a wonderful wizard, and his time was precious dash, McGonagall said of course. But, this matter is very important. Harry's glasses almost fell to the ground from the trembling. What could be more important than the Ministry of Magic? Obviously, Professor McGonagall's way of weighing things made sense. It's, it's like this, Professor. It's the Philosopher's Stone. At this time, Harry didn't say any more secrets. Professor McGonagall, who was still in shock at first, suddenly showed a shocked expression, and he didn't even bother to pick up the book in his arms when it fell on the ground. How do you know? Professor, I know, I think, Snee, someone is trying to steal the Philosopher's Stone. I have to talk to Professor Dumbledore. Harry almost said Snape directly. Professor Dumbledore will be back tomorrow. The astonishment in Professor McGonagall's eyes flickered, but he still looked at the three of them suspiciously. I don't know how you know about the Philosopher's Stone, but please rest assured that it is strictly guarded. Protect. No one can steal it. But the Professor. I know what I'm talking about, Potter. If you have nothing to do, you can go outside to bask in the sun. Before Harry could continue speaking, Professor McGonagall cut him off, then picked up the book on the floor and turned away. It's over. Harry quickly whispered to the two of them after seeing Professor McGonagall go away. Snape must have done it. He got everything he needed and tricked Professor Dumbledore out of the school. Tonight he's sure to go through the trapdoor. Saying this, Harry thought of the owl he saw on the grounds earlier. That owl flew towards the school with a note in its beak, which must have been given by Snape. Good afternoon, Mr. Potter. Just as they were still thinking about what to do, a figure suddenly jumped up from behind and startled them. It was Snape, whom they hated the most. You shouldn't be here in this weather. You have to be careful. People will think you're doing something bad if you wander around like this. You know, Gryffindor can't afford to lose points. Snape seemed to be he kindly reminded them, but there was a hint of teasing in his tone. Afterwards, the trio hurriedly left and came to the stone steps outside. Okay, we have to do something now. Harry looked at Hermione and Ron and said eagerly, one person is responsible for monitoring Snape. Wait outside the staff room and follow him if he comes out. Hermione's matter, it's up to you to do it. Since we have to wait outside the staff lounge, why not go directly to Professor Eisen? Hearing Harry's arrangement, Hermione put forward her own opinion. That's right. We can have Professor Eisen keep an eye on Snape. He'll definitely help us. Ron also agreed with this solution. Okay, then, Hermione will go to Professor Eisen. The two of us will go and watch outside the corridor on the fourth floor. Harry thought for a while and agreed with the two of them, and then he said something to Ron. However, Harry and Ron were really out of luck. As soon as they walked outside the door that separated Lu Wei from other places in the corridor on the fourth floor, they were discovered by Professor McGonagall who suddenly appeared. I think you think you're stronger than a bunch of magic spells, don't you? Professor McGonagall's growling voice sounded in Harry and Ron's ears. Stop messing around. And if you come here next time, 50 points off Gryffindor. Yes, 50 points off my own house, Mr. Wesley. The two died before the plan was implemented. So they had to return to the Gryffindor common room in dismay. Don't worry, at least Hermione went to Professor Eisen. Harry could only comfort himself. Hermione, what's the matter? Don't worry, take it easy. When Eisen was told by Snape that Hermione had something to ask him, Eisen had actually expected it. Seeing Hermione's panicked look, Eisen reached out and brushed her head just like last time. A ray of light flashed, calming her ups and downs. Professor, Harry found out. Afterwards, Hermione didn't care about other things, and directly told Eisen what Harry found out. That is to say, Dumbledore left Hogwarts, and Snape learned how to subdue Lu Wei, so he will steal the Philosopher's Stone tonight? After listening to what Hermione said, Eisen asked, although there is not much expression on the face, but the heart is already eager to try. That's right, for Eisen, it's finally time to touch the Philosopher's Stone. Yes, Professor, we must prevent Snape from succeeding. Perhaps seeing that Eisen believed her words, Hermione's tone relaxed a bit. Well, okay. I see. You go back first. I'll go find you in a while. After pondering for a while, Eisen nodded to Hermione. After Hermione left, Eisen thought about it and realized that if he was going to get involved, it was best to go with the trio. But then he thought of a problem. That is, would Harry and the others think that after they knew about it, they would just leave it alone? Probably not. They're Gryffindor lion cubs, after all with an adventurous spirit in their bones. With some thoughts running through his mind, Eisen let out a long breath and walked towards the Gryffindor common room. Chapter 49 Action When Eisen entered the Gryffindor common room through the portrait of the fat lady, he found that Harry, 
Ron and Hermione were already sitting on chairs and gathered together, seeming to be discussing something intensely. Professor Eisen here, seeing Eisen approaching, Hermione immediately stood up and greeted her. How is it? Do you have any plans? Eisen was also unceremonious, sitting directly next to Hermione, and then looked at Harry. We felt that we had to secretly get the Sorcerer's Stone before Snape. Perhaps after arguing, they had already made a decision. So when Harry mentioned this method, neither Hermione nor Ron refuted. Although they all knew that this kind of behavior was very dangerous and might even get them fired, Voldemort had already killed Harry's parents, so they couldn't let Snape get the Philosopher's Stone and welcome Voldemort back. Then, don't worry, I will go out with you tonight, so that we can definitely stop Snape. Eisen took the opportunity to say something. That's great, with the professor here, we will definitely succeed. Ron breathed a sigh of relief when he heard that Eisen would follow them. Even though she knew that Eisen had agreed to act with them, just to be on the safe side, Hermione was still flipping through all the notes, hoping to happen upon a spell that could be used later. By the way, how are you going to go out later? As if suddenly thinking of something, Eisen looked at Harry. That's right, if you go out for a night tour at night, it's okay for Eisen himself. But if you bring a few little wizards with you, it's not justified anyway. We can use my invisibility cloak. Harry glanced at Hermione and Ron, and after a pause, he showed a happy expression. Thankfully I got it back earlier. Eisen nodded and said nothing. Time passed slowly, and the wizards in the Gryffindor common room also went back to their dormitories to sleep. Harry, you can get the invisibility cloak now. Seeing this, Ron whispered a reminder to Harry. Harry ran upstairs when he heard the sound, and came down within a few minutes. Eisen turned his head to look over, and Harry was holding the invisibility cloak in his hand. Besides that, he was also carrying a flute. Eisen was puzzled for a while, and then suddenly realized. Obviously, Harry wanted to use the flute to deal with Lu Wei just in case. Put this away. It has my magic imprint on it, so that I can follow you. Seeing the posture of the three of them, Eisen knew that they were ready, then took out three playing cards, and left them on each of them with his magic wand. Obtained the infinity magic imprint, and then handed it over to three people. The reason for this is that after the three of them put on the invisibility cloak, Eisen couldn't see them. So, in order to be able to follow them closely, Eisen thought of this way. In simple terms, the three carry cards with his magic mark, so Eisen can locate their positions with a few cards. After all, Eisen is not strong enough to see through the invisibility cloak. As for when Eisen's strength will be able to see through the invisibility cloak, this is something he cannot predict. Because Harry's invisibility cloak is said to be one of the Deathly Hallows, even the legendary Shindu can't find the person hidden by the invisibility cloak, of course he can't. Okay, I will use the illusion spell to hide and follow you. But please remember, our purpose is to get the Philosopher's Stone first, so if there is no danger, I will not make a move. See three people after accepting the poker with the magic mark, Eisen asked solemnly. To be honest, these levels are reserved for trios after all. If Eisen had to go all out, he'd probably be able to pierce it from start to finish in a matter of minutes. But then, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, not having enough training would not be a good thing. What are you doing? A voice suddenly came from the corner of the room. The three of Harry were startled, looked there and found that it was Neville. He's also clutching his pet, a rather ugly-looking toad. The three seemed to think of something again, and hurriedly looked in the direction of Professor Eisen, only to find that there was no one there. Thinking of the disillusionment spell that the professor said earlier, they knew that he had been hidden. As the thoughts turned, the three of them breathed a sigh of relief in silence. It's nothing, Neville. We're not doing anything, Harry said, already hiding the invisibility cloak behind his back. Are you planning to go out again? Neville stared at the three of them. No matter how he looked at them, he felt that they were a little guilty. No, no. Seeing that Professor Eisen really had no intention of showing up, Hermione waved her hand at Neville. We don't want to go out? Neville, why don't you go to bed? Looking at the clock next to him, Harry was very anxious. I'm afraid Snape has already passed through the trap door. You can't go out, you will still be caught. If that happens, Gryffindor will be even more unlucky. Neville, who had always been timid and timid, was extremely firm at this time. You don't understand, Neville. This matter is very important. Harry really couldn't explain too much, but this time Neville was very firm and stopped them at anything he said. I won't let you do this, I want to compete with you. Neville said, took out his wand and blocked the portrait hole, staring at them. To be honest, Eisen, who was hiding in the dark, was a little surprised when he saw this scene. In fact, for Eisen, he still sympathized with Neville. After all, his parents had been caught by Death Eaters and tortured with the Cruciatus Curse for a long time and they had been lying half-dead on the sickbed ever since. Because of living in such a family environment, Neville was extremely inferior and timid since childhood. But unexpectedly, after entering Gryffindor for a year, Neville has already changed a little. Neville, get out of the way, don't be a fool. Seeing Neville's behavior like this, 
Ron on the side, suddenly became angry. I'm not a fool. I don't think you should break the school rules anymore. Neville shook his head and refused to move away. Seeing that she would continue to entangle with Neville, Hermione next to her couldn't bear it anymore. Neville, I'm so sorry for doing this. Hermione drew out her wand and stepped forward, casting the petrifying curse directly on Neville. All petrified. As Hermione's spell fell, Neville stood up straight, then swayed a few times and fell to the ground. Neville's whole body was as hard as stone, which was obviously the effect of Hermione's petrification spell. What happened to him? Ron asked in a low voice, looking a little startled at Hermione. I'm so sorry, Neville. It's the petrifying charm. I'm so sorry, Hermione said, with a look of sadness on her face. Obviously, if it is not a critical moment, she would never say a spell to her friend. They quickly stepped over Neville, put on the cloak of invisibility, and walked through the portrait hole. But Aizen was hiding in the dark and followed them closely. With the convenience of the invisibility cloak to hide their figure, Harry and Ron soon came to the stairs leading to the fourth floor. Unexpectedly, they met Peeves here. I don't know if it's because of his talent or something else, but Peeves actually noticed some movement. Although he couldn't see Harry and the others, he still yelled. What should we do? Let Professor Eisen lure him away? Ron whispered, with an ugly look on his face. Don't worry, let me do it. At the critical moment, Harry tactfully shouted directly. The bloody Barrow doesn't want to be seen by others. Of course he has his reasons. To be honest, I have been using Yegwa to read and read books recently, change sources, and read aloud with many timbers, Yegwa Yudu Android and Apple are all available. That's right. Harry deliberately used a hoarse voice, pretending to be the Bloody Lake Barrow to play Peeves. Because the Bloody Barrow is the leader of all the ghosts in Hogwarts school, and because he was very cruel during his lifetime, Peeves is very afraid of the Bloody Barrow. As a result, as Harry expected, Peeves was simply scared away. Chapter 50 Breakthrough After getting away from Peeves, the three of them climbed the stairs all the way and soon came to the outside of the corridor on the fourth floor. However, to the shock of the three, the closed door had been opened with a gap. See, Snape has already passed Lu Wei, Professor Eisen. Harry looked around, looking for Eisen as he spoke. Stop talking. Hurry up and get in. In the silent night, Harry's voice fell behind for a while before Eisen's voice sounded behind them. Let's go. Under the invisibility cloak, Harry and the others glanced at each other and heaved a sigh of relief knowing that Professor Eisen was right next to them. Crunch. Following the sound of Harry and the others pushing the door at the same time, there were low-pitched barking sounds reaching their ears. After entering, the three-headed dog was shaking its nose and barking at them continuously. That's, Hermione was observant enough to see the harp at Lu Wei's feet. It's the harp. Snape must have left it. Ron confirmed Hermione's opinion. As soon as the music stops, Lu Wei will wake up immediately, Harry said. Seeing that Lu Wei was about to fully wake up, he didn't care about other things, and quickly picked up the flute Hagrid gave him and started playing. Although he had no tone at all, Lu Wei still fell asleep with his eyelids drooping. Afterwards, the three of them opened the pull ring of the trapdoor without any risk, and then jumped down. And Aizen, who followed behind the three, also jumped down. It's just that he cast a levitation spell on himself when he jumped down. It's the devil's net. Don't move. Hermione's scream sounded suddenly in the darkness. So, how do I get rid of it? I can't breathe? Harry gasped. The long vines entangled him tightly, as if to hang him. Professor Sprout said, said it likes the dark and the damp. Hermione said hurriedly, fire it with your spell. Eisen's thin voice reached Hermione's ear. Oh, that's right. Hermione suddenly calmed down after hearing Eisen's voice, and then pulled out her wand as if lighting Snape's robes, a blue flame burst out. Afterwards, the devil's net retreated directly, releasing all three of them. It's a good thing you listened carefully in herbal medicine class, Hermione. Harry wiped the sweat off his face and showed a thankful expression after they retreated to the wall. Then, several people saw a stone corridor in front of them. We can only go this way, Harry said, walking into the depths together with Ron and Hermione. There is no way, there is only one passable road here. Walking to the end of the corridor, accompanied by constant rustling and clanging, a brightly lit room appeared in front of the three of them. Through the window, Eisen could clearly see that on the ceiling of the room, countless keys with wings were constantly flying. There were rustling and clanging noises coming from above, which explained where the sound was coming from. On the opposite side of the room was a heavy wooden door, which was tightly shut. Harry entered the room cautiously, unexpectedly, he was not attacked by those flying keys. He came to the wooden door smoothly, but found that the door was locked. After Hermione and Ron followed, they tried to push together, but there was still no movement. Even after Hermione tried a lockpicking charm, she still couldn't open the door. What to do? Ron suddenly lost his mind. Those are not for decoration, Hermione said thoughtfully, looking up at the flying keys. That's the key, 
obviously the key used to open the door. Harry also spotted the key, then looked around and found a broomstick. Obviously, this checkpoint is for them to find the key that can open the door on a broomstick. But there are too many keys here, Ron said, stepping forward to carefully examine the lock of the door. Afterwards, he seemed to notice something and exclaimed, What we are looking for is a big key, probably silver, like a doorknob. Then, under Eisen's watchful eye, the trio started wandering on broomsticks. It can only be said that Harry is indeed a natural Quidditch seeker. He quickly found the target among the many keys, and then grabbed it. After getting the key, Harry and others passed the door smoothly. When Eisen followed behind and entered inside, he saw the three of them standing there blankly, with shocked expressions on their faces. That's right, here is a huge chessboard, with black and white chess pieces scattered on it. Even in Eisen's own eyes, it is quite a shocking scene. What now? Harry's body trembled a little, but he had to ask, isn't that obvious? We have to play chess to get across the room. Ron, who was extremely talented in wizard chess, saw the intention at a glance. I saw that there was a door behind the white chess piece opposite them. How? The chessboard in front of her was so huge that Hermione didn't know how to play. I think it should be that we have to be pawns. Ron showed a tangled look on his face, and then walked to the side of the Black Knight. Do we? Must we go there with you? When the Black Knight nodded, Ron turned pale. That's right, we have to replace three pawns. But, don't blame me for being rude. You two are not very good at chess. Looking at the two of them, Ron showed an embarrassed look. Yes, against Hermione and Harry, Ron was only confident enough in wizard chess. Then, under Eisen's watchful eye, Ron began to arrange. Under Ron's command, the white pieces were eaten one by one, and the black pieces were also continuously lost. Let me think, Ron showed anxiety on his face. But then he said resolutely, That's right, this is the only way. I must be eaten, Harry. You can checkmate the king. No, it's too dangerous. Harry and Hermione shouted at the same time. After all, they have seen what happened on the chessboard earlier. Whenever a black piece is captured, the white piece is very cruel and knocks the black piece to the ground without mercy. But there's always a sacrifice if not. How can we stop Snape? He's about to get the Philosopher's Stone. Ron snapped. By the way, Professor Eisen, Professor Eisen can help? Hermione suddenly called out, remembering Professor Eisen's reminder earlier. Then, Harry also looked over, with a surprised expression on his face. Along the way, they almost forgot that Eisen was following them. In other words, currently the best app for reading and listening to books, Yegwa Reading, Yegwa You Do install the latest version. Just take out the cards, do what you want, don't worry. Eisen's voice came from behind them. Ron finally breathed a sigh of relief, and quickly took out the cards that Eisen had handed him earlier, and held them in his hand. Then, Ron took a step forward on the board, and the White Queen rushed forward. She raised her rocky arm and slammed it down on Ron's head. Be careful, Hermione couldn't help screaming. However, at a critical moment, the card in Ron's hand suddenly changed shape and turned into a metal shield with a handle, which he held in front of him. When There was a crisp knocking sound, and Ron was directly knocked off the chessboard by a strong force. Just when Harry and Hermione were worried, Ron stood up unsteadily, the metal shield in his hand had turned into a card again. Ron, are you okay? Seeing Ron stand up, Harry greeted him. Oh, it's okay. Act quickly. Don't delay here. Ron rubbed his ears vigorously, as if he was shocked by the sound just now, and his face was very grim. Still, he waved his hand at Harry. Hermione on the other side finally breathed a sigh of relief. Harry moved three squares to the left on the board, directly checkmate the opponent's king. At this time, Ron finally regained his strength, and after seeing the victory, he also smiled. Afterwards, the white chess pieces backed away one after another, giving way to a passage. As soon as this checkpoint was passed, Eisen followed the three of them and passed through the opposite door.